your uh, charisma modifier to the damage. So it's the only spell that has a base like flat damage. I remember that because I played a so you can get like one d ten plus four damage as a cantrip. It's just like all the time for free. It's pretty amazing. Okay, uh, we are using the optional. Wait, what optional rule for feats? Um, everybody gets. Where you can trade stats for feats. New, although that might be what I'm saying. Um, it was just that everybody gets a feat to begin with, and if you, you're a human variant or whatever, you get two instead. No, we are not okay. using that. I forget not. But any time that you get a stat increase, you can choose to instead get a feat. Okay, that makes sense. That's One just second. the basic rule. Yeah. <laughs> I think that feats are technically a, a, an optional rule, if I recall from reading the book, but they're, we're definitely using them. I don't... really? That's what I remember saying. Hold on, I've got my... That seems really... There's... Yeah, it, it, it seemed really weird. That's what I remember thinking when I saw that. I was like... Like, paladins suck without feats. And I can't... like, that, that would change the balance so much. Yeah, using the optional feats rule, you can forego taking the stats to gain a feat of your choice instead. <laughs> Hi, Liz. Um, so yes, it is technically an optional rule. I am not going to treat it as one, it is, it is a rule. You guys can use feats, because, holy shit, yes, yeah. feats are so good. Although it's one of those, like, I don't know how optional it is, because I think if you're, like, in the Adventurers League... Like everybody, that's the official that seems rule. Very likely. Like they play with it. You apparently can't take feats from Unearthed Arcana because it's like OP. Some of them are pretty broken. Yeah, you should have seen the Samurai when it was first released in Unearthed Arcana. Holy shit! It was so broken. Let me see if I can find it. Uh, Unearthed Arcana Samurai. Joe, if they say, like, it's a certain type of cantrip, and can I not use that then? How do you mean? Like, it says necromancy cantrip. No, it's a cleric cantrip. Necromancy is the school of magic that it's from, and sometimes that matters. You might have a bonus to cantrip or to spells from a certain school or something along those lines, but it's, uh, there's, there's two aspects to a spell. There's what classes can use it, and then there's the school that it's from. So wizards get a lot of, get, like, spells from every school, basically. Uh, and they, they get necromancy because they can be necromancers, and necromancer is a type of wizard. But clerics get access to a lot of necromancy spells as well because life and death is sort of their, their shtick. Okay. Druids get some necromancy stuff too, I think. Yeah, so um, the samurai originally, uh, <laughs> starting at third level, mm -hmm. um, they got the ability to use a bonus action to give themselves advantage on all attack rolls and resistance to bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing damage until the end of your next turn. They can use the feature three times and regain all uses when they finish a short rest. What the hell? Okay. So, that was just mm -hmm. fucking broken. Mm -hmm. Now, it's you get advantage on attack rolls for one turn and you get five temporary hit points. That's it. And that's still really good. Yeah. But before, it was like, the fuck. Although I don't think it's as overpowered as the uh, barbarian thing that I was talking to Nick and Paul about last time the new barbarian that's actually legitimate, like you can play it now, that, um, can't die. Dying is overrated. Yeah, that's basically their reaction. I have to read this to you, Nick, because it's the most ridiculous thing I've ever seen. It, it doesn't sound legitimate. It sounds like one of those, like, fan base, like, no, this would totally be fair characters. <laughs> so, first of all, you know that you can resurrect people and it's extremely expensive, right? Like, it's yeah. like a thousand gold for like right. the cheapest resurrection. So the first thing that uh, this barbarian subclass gets is um, if a spell such as Raise Dead has the sole effect of restoring you to life, the caster doesn't need material components to cast the spell on you. So okay. if you die, they can res you for free, which is ridiculous. 
Um, then there's like some fairly standard stuff. Uh, if you fail a saving throw while raging, you can re-roll it. Um, uh, you can give people advantage on a saving throws and attack rolls until the start of your next turn. And then at level 14, which isn't super high actually, while you're raging, having zero hit points doesn't knock you unconscious. You must still make death saving throws and suffer the normal effects of taking damage at zero hit points. However, if you would die due to failing death saving throws, you don't die until your rage ends, and you die then only if you still have zero hit points. So you are literally unkillable as long as you're raging. Period. Did you not? Yeah, so all you need is your healer to heal you once while you're raging. Yep. Yeah. And you just can't die. Unless, so the only weakness is, if you are knocked unconscious, your rage ends. Or so if you're, like, charmed or put to sleep or something. But I'm pretty sure that fairly early on you become immune to being slept and stuff while you're raging, because you're really angry all the time. Basically, barbarians are fucking hacks. True. And guess what class Therese is playing. It's just nice to have a girl not playing a healer. <laughs> That's true. I think she's going to be playing, um... Maybe she did say she was going to play Zealot. So there's Zealot or Storm Herald. She's not playing the Ancestral Protector, which makes me sad, because... Um... I like the Ancestral Protector. It's like a cool tank build. Alright, Joe. This I finally picked my spells, but I still can't figure out how to make them, like drag drop over. I don't get this. Do I okay. drag it onto cantrips? Do I drag it on the space beneath it? Do I open You should be able to drag it anywhere, but you need to drag the spell from the right, not from p clicking on the cleric list. So if you're trying to drag, like, the light spell, you need to type in light in the compendium. I, I did, and I found it. And, and then should... drag and drop. You should be. You have access to this, right? Yeah, it can be. Yeah, I'm here. This is bad. This is bad. Whoa! You just got really loud. Bad. Wait, it sounds bad. It, it sounds like you're them. shoving the mic directly into your voice box. I don't know why. Uh, give me a moment. Let me sound with my computer, then not with the headphones. If you're on your laptop, it might be trying to use the laptop um, uh, microphone instead of the microphone that you're trying to use. I'm using the left no, the laptop microphone sounds good. I'm gonna switch to it right now. Oh, okay. Are you still having trouble dragging those spells in, Paul? Ben thinks it's because I took my page and, like, put it on the side, but I should have been able to do that with... I did that with, like, my other abilities, like my racials and stuff. I just Let don't know what I'm doing wrong here. I, and you did it. Um, yeah, but I can't do it if I pop your character sheet out. It has to be popped in. Okay, it worked. I just had to not have it popped out of, like, my page, actually. Yeah, I think it's because when you pop it out, it's not quite... It, it's not as linked in the same way. To delete it... Yeah, okay, you got it. But it's... But, like I said, I could do all the racials and everything that way, no problem. I would just, like, huh. drag drop them and they work perfectly. It might just be an, a feature that they haven't fully implemented yet. Alright. Um... Ben... Or if you're online, you need to add your spells as well. I believe the rangers start with a few, don't they? He starts with them at yep, level two. Oh, with only at level two. Level okay, great. Two. We you did want to talk to you about that, though. What's that? I, we're still a little confused. Mm -hmm. So, the way spells work are, you learn a spell, like a certain, you know a certain amount of spells, and then mm -hmm. at the beginning of the day, you choose a certain amount of those spells that you can use that day, correct? You choose which ones you have prepared. So the ways to think about it is the spells you know are in your spell book, the spells you have prepared are on your hotbar, and your spell slots are your mana. You can only cast spells from your hotbar. So at the beginning of the day, you choose which spells you can cast that day, and your spell slots determine how many times you can cast them. 
You can cast. So you can use all your spell slots on the same spell, but you can only cast spells that you have prepared. And some classes like mine know all of my first level, and other ones know they have to choose a couple. Correct. So like wizards know a few, and they learn some when they level up. Um, a fair number of classes actually know all of them, all the ones available to them at least. Um, I How think that rangers that? don't, and I think that wizards, I know that wizards don't, but I think maybe the rest do. So, unless I'm mistaken, can you hear me fine? Yeah. Alright, good. Yeah, the laptop mic works great. Um, so, unless I'm mistaken, at level 2, as a ranger, I learn two first level spells. Right. So that means I choose two from the list, and those are always prepared every day. I mean, unless you decide to prepare something else. If you eventually get more spells than you're able to prepare, I don't know. I'm, I'm, a, a, a rangers may not be able to learn enough spells that this is ever a problem. But people who can learn more spells than they can pre prepare As for the have release. to choose which ones they prepare at the beginning of any given day. All right, I think that was my problem because the amount I could, the amount I knew was always the same. I could was it just said the amount I knew, and I think that means it's the same amount that I can prepare every day. Let's see. Unless I'm mistaken, crazy. You know two spells, you're supposed to... Yeah, I don't see that you ever uh, learn more spells than you have prepared. So, like, if you look at, for example, like, the Paladin, I believe the Paladins are this way, um, it says, like, the number of spells that you have prepared, it doesn't it? Let's see. Oh, no, see, the Paladin specifies. Once you gain access to an Oath spell, you always have it prepared. Oh, yeah, and then Oath spells don't count against the number of spells you can prepare each day. So normally, there is, there, for the other spells, there's a limit, but not, um, not, doesn't affect your spells. What is banging in the background? Uh, Liz is packing stuff. Oh, okay. For some mm -hmm. reason, it just sounds like somebody dropping something loud. No, it's like hit. packing tape being pulled off a rope. Oh, right, yes, that can make an extremely loud noise. Alright, um... <laughs> so I was thinking of background faction agent, which means I used to work for an organization. Uh, okay. The, one of the ones that seemed to make sense was the Order of the Gauntlet. Um, the Bears of the Gauntlet are holy warriors on a righteous quest to crush evil and promote justice. They tend to be proficient in religion, seek aid from law enforcement friendly to the Order's ideals, and the clergy of the Order's patron gods. And the reason I left them was because they didn't care enough about burying the dead. They were more worried about the living. Okay. I can give you a link if you want. I'm looking some stuff, yeah. seemed like the one that made the most sense. Okay, I didn't think your character was quite that um, crush evil, uh, but that's, that's why fine. he left them. Like, mm. I think his parents may have been, like, pushed him into the order. And right. And he was like, okay, fine, but eventually was like, no, this is, this is too goody two shoes. Mm hmm. So he no longer belongs to them, or is not right. active. Okay. And just so you and other people know, all that background stuff is optional. You don't have to have like a a faction that you're affiliated with or anything like that. Oh, okay. Um, so I could just be a faction agent and make up a faction. 
or yeah, you, if you if you want to be a faction agent, you can name a faction, or you can say that you were part of a, you know a group that you make up. It could be a big thing, a little thing. Like if you if you want to say that the organization is like a world spanning organization that other people should know about, mm -hmm. then yes, it should be something that you know there's external references for, like the Order of the Gauntlet. Gotcha. But if you just want like like one of my, you know my characters are like acolytes, or some of my characters I've had the acolyte background, and I don't like list the specific religion that they were part of necessarily or something that's that is optional okay more detail is cool but i don't want you to feel like like ah, i guess this is the only one i can pick like yeah. you don't have to pick one if you don't want to yeah i totally made up my own organization for my background that's always cool yeah, there you go easier if you're a dwarf too because you back ah it's under there yeah. under the grounds and people don't know about it You've never it's heard cool of it <laughs> Totally from Canada and definitely real. And then if you encounter another dwarf who's like, I've never heard of that, you're like, oh, it's in a different mine. You haven't been there. <laughs> definitely, definitely different underground cavern. You wouldn't know about it. It's very, very far away. It's a real country. Long way away. away. Um. I made such a great girlfriend from Canada joke the other day in Marcia's chat. Nobody even noticed. I was so mad. I don't even remember what it was. It was really funny. It was disappointing. I got no recognition. I was like, shit, what's the point of even being funny then if nobody's going to pay any attention? Fuck. Get I do have a not die ability, kind of like our barbarians, because I'm a half orc. Oh, yeah, where you can like shrug off a, a single blow that would kill you? Yeah, like once a day when I would die, I don't die. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's pretty sweet. Very useful as a tank. It, I, we could have used that in our campaign. Um, Nick Collins says that he is putting Emily down and he might be a few minutes late, which is fine. Um, Nick is sort of co-DMing and he knows a lot about the campaign, so um, cool. oh, that's funny. This whole picture that you guys are looking at right now, that's actually a minion. <laughs> I can give it health and stuff. Sorry. Um, so he... Uh, he, he can skip the basic intro. Um, what I'd like to do is start out by getting everybody to sort of introduce their characters um, and uh, give as much background as you want to give. And I also uh, let you guys decide, do you want to sort of gloss over the how we met and just start out as you're an adventuring party? Because I can do that. Or would you rather try to sort of play out a who are you, who are you, where do you come from, what do you care about sort of thing? My preference would be... We're already an adventuring party, but as we play, we might make up background events as to how we met, like remember sure. things. Well, and you are also very low level at the moment, so uh, you won't have been adventuring together very long, and you might not know very much about each other, and how much everybody else knows about your character is entirely up to you. I mean, you could be the kind of guy who like introduced himself, like, oh, my father was killed by bandits and I hate everybody, or you might... like. I am a fighter. I'm going to help you kill things. That's all you need to know. That's entirely up to you. Yeah, I'd prefer if we were already together as well. It's always a bit awkward otherwise. Yeah, it's pretty... I think none of us are serious enough about the RP side of things. We're, we like the RP and the gameplay, but we're not like hardcore um, RP, so... Hey, is that Nick? Hey, how's it going? Hey, we were just saying we might uh, get the very basic started without you, and then you should showed up good timing yeah um emily's not asleep yet so i might need to deal with her but hopefully not. no worries it'll probably take us a little time to sort of get get some momentum so um we were just saying that we're probably gonna have you guys already start as a party as opposed to uh starting like trying to you know sort of role play the how we met um awkward teen romance phase of the adventure that's fine um can can we all introduce each other though Yes, I would like everybody to do that if, for for your name, if nothing else, um, just so I know how to pronounce you all. I'm gonna go ahead and pronounce Therese as Therese for now. Um, but uh, Nick, you want to go ahead and introduce your character? Uh, which Nick? Me? Sorry, Ugh, I hate that. Collins, you want to introduce your character? Sure. Uh, so I'm. My name is Euandros de Gondola. I'm a wizard, um, human wizard, and uh, I'm kind of strapped for cash, which is why I'm uh, out here adventuring with you guys. Reason's really not important, but uh, hopefully I'll be able to get back to my day job 
as an alchemist when I get a chance. All right, so that's you, Andros to Gondola. He has a picture. Nobody else has a picture, so you're all second class citizens. So you all know that. Yeah. Um, okay. Euandros is pretty poor, although not as poor as William Hastings, who has zero anything. Um, what do you mean by zero anything? I was looking at your, I was making up a little uh, shorthand list for everybody's stats, and you hadn't put in any money. You had all your other items in there, but your money was zero. Oh, shit. Uh... <laughs> also, Nick? So you're broke. Too late to retcon it. Props on uh, the Elite I, Dangerous uh, character. Swear, yeah. Um, Alright, Nick. Uh, uh, no, who's next? Paul, you want to go ahead and introduce your character? Alright, so my guy's Glomdil Deepminer. It looks like I'm a human there, but I'll give Joe a picture in a sec. Uh, um, I'm a dwarf, uh, a cleric from a... This one... Uh, our monastery basically had some internal uh, fight about a core part of our belief. Broke into two factions and started attacking each other. And so we're both trying to get the, the ancient scripts of the other one to burn it, and then theirs will be the correct one. Nice. So at the moment, our uh, rivals got really close to burning ours, and our leader at the moment like decided that he would send me off with it, because if they can't get it, they can't burn it, and then claim theirs is right. So right now, my guy is just like, off adventuring the world, holding our, like, our sacred text, basically. Awesome. <laughs> cool. Okay. Um, and then, uh, William Hastings. How do I give you a picture? Uh, the same way you send any file to anybody, you can, actually, I think you can drag and drop it in Discord, and that should work. Um, you can also just send it to me in, like, a private message or something. Um, if you put it in the Discord channel, uh, Collins might be able to help me with it, because he's more proficient in getting characters set up and things, so, um. Alright, I'll try to figure that out as Paul figures out, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> I am William Hastings. I used to be a scholar at the Institute of the Finest Arts. Basically, I studied magic and specifically magically created creatures. Okay. Um, after I'd been there for a while, I sort of a mix of things happened. Um, I started getting I started getting more and more disturbed by my field of study because. A lot, the majority of uh, magically created creatures fall into basically two pair categories, either constructs or monstrosities. And monstrosities mm -hmm. are basically made for almost no good reason. Uh, usually to cause trouble or, to, or for war or whatever. And a lot of them, when their makers die, end up in the world and causing more trouble. And mm -hmm. constructs are a bit better. They tend to be made for more constructive purposes. Huh, constructive hmm. purposes. Um, but there are a lot. But there tend to be a lot of problems when people improperly, basically, uh, code them, so to speak. Um, and they tend to be, and they tend to be more dead. Whoa! I just lost you. Can you hear me? Yeah. Sorry, you went super quiet for a second. Weird. Um, and when they go bad, they tend to be worse because they're made by people with money or you know, actual nations, that type of thing, officially, instead of a crazy alchemist who fix it. Um, so I tried to raise awareness of it, because I felt that these things were not being dealt with properly, and that didn't really work. I wrote a variety of books, but, I mean, they're very thick uh, works that only people really deeply into the field are going to be really thick. So that, so my sort of, like, indignation over this, plus my sort of growing, uh, want to do something about it ended up with me uh, eventually setting off to try to fix things but also get more you know first-hand experience so I could make better works and hopefully get people to pay more attention and as I went out I realized that I enjoyed this more than sitting around uh, being a scholar and so I mostly send my notes back to a colleague of mine to put together these things Okay. I do general. I do general adventuring because it's hard to find specifically, you know, work with monstrosities and constructs. But those are my main. 
but you're interested in like finding, looking for those things, sort of chasing them down, figuring yeah, out what's exactly. up with them. Yeah, exactly. Figuring out what's up with them, dealing with their problems, that thing. Okay, sorry, I'm just getting a couple of stats here. Mm -hmm. Alright, Rudig, you want to go ahead and introduce your guy? Sure, I'm playing a half-orc named Zakagur. He's a paladin, you can call him Zack for short. Um, his dad was a paladin, uh, and his dad's dad was a paladin and so on, back quite a ways. Um, so when his dad married an orc, that was quite the family drama since they were seen as being evil. Um, but they were determined to raise him up in the ways of the standard paladin order of the gauntlet, crushing evil, yada yada. And he joined that order, and this worked until um, the order was trying to save a village one time. And he realized that in order to uh, prevent all the dead villagers from becoming undead and being resurrected, they were just going to burn the entire thing. And in that culture, that... Um, to those, those people, that meant that all their ancestors who had just been killed, their souls would be doomed to wander the earth forever because their bodies were burned. And they ritually committed suicide um, when they saw their village and all their relatives being burned. And that struck him as so awful and so terrible that not only did they not save the village, they didn't save the people they got outside of the village, but they just completely messed everything up by not knowing how to properly release the souls from these bodies, that he okay. devoted himself to proper burial rituals and the god of death for the rest of his life. So his quest is to make sure everybody is buried or burned or interred or fed to the eagles in accordance with their proper culture. Great. Seems, seems very fun. Why can't I collapse these? Huh. Weird. Okay. Um, so, Nick, I've got your base. Or sorry, Rudik, I've got your basic stats in here, but I don't see your. I assume your armor class is not actually ten. Oh crap! Um, Let me figure that out quick. Your initiative probably is actually zero. Yes. You probably have a hit die and some hit points. Okay. It's a d10. Let me. Why doesn't that? Oh, would that be on? Let's see. Character sheet. <laughs> Everybody else. Set automatically by uh, class, I think. Yeah. So. I just need to do that. Your hit My points should be twelve. You automatically max roll your first one. Okay. Um, one so hit your hit dice. die is a d10. You automatically get 10 hit points plus your concentration modifier. So you get 12. It's automatic. Uh, it's because you're a paladin. It's a okay. d10. So, um, so you can already. see if you click here. Yeah, d10 plus two. That's your hit die. Okay. Um, your armor class should probably not be blank. Um, you don't need to fill in your items right now because I think we're pretty much ready to go. But at some do point, I you probably get, want to do that. Do I get plate or chain mail or what do I get to start with? Uh, it's Paladin start with a ch scale chain. Let me see if, I... if you have a two hander, your armor class should be sixteen, unless you decide to go medium armor, which is also an option. Um, let's see. Sixteen sounds so, right. Why is my initiative so low? Because you don't have any dexterity. I have eleven initiative. dexterity. Yeah, so it's your modifier is zero. Oh, so your okay. dexterity, gotcha. you're still gonna you're gonna roll a d20. Your initiative is the modifier you add to your initiative when you roll. Mm -hmm. So somebody with really high dexterity gets a, a modifier, and you gotcha. don't because you suck. You're a big slow clunking paladin type dude. Right. So yeah, you're um, proficient in heavy armor, so you can wear it. Uh, your starting equipment is yeah. They say you start with chainmail. Okay. I switched my wisdom and my dex, so I now have an and dex. and dexterity or an initiative. Yeah, it, it automatically updated that. My starting is chainmail, so I put that under. Do I have to I manually notice. change my AC? Yes. Okay. Um, roll twenty does not know what you have equipped. 
All right, mm. so this thing I can download. And then I go in here, and I go here. Sorry, I'm also updating your um, icons so that you actually have a face. Okay, so my attack is Great Scythe, which is damage 2d6 plus strength. And the attack is strength proficient, range is melee. Shit. That's what I wanted. Um, damn it. What did it just happen? It, like, I tried to drag and drop into roll 20, and it just made that browser window the picture instead of changing your character. Okay. So that's good. Edit this. Select the token to use. Okay. So that should be fine. Alright, um... Oh, cool. Thank you, Ben. Yeah, no problem. I put it on the other site. That was why I thought I had already given it to you. No problem. Let me download this. Save image. Save it there. Um, where's my TNT folder? Okay. I'll get you in here. William Hastings. Edit. There you go, Joe. I put mine up as well. So I have all my spells down. How do I say which ones are the ones that I have equipped for the day? Or is that something I just have to know? Um, you hit the little cog icon to open up the spell and just mark it as prepared. There's a little checkbox. And it'll have a, a red circle next to it to show that it's prepared. Oh, all my spells start prepared. Okay, I see. I can fix this. Sorry, I'm back. Um, okay. Oh, thank you, Paul. Uh, original. So now everybody should have an icon. Um, I'm gonna put you guys all here for a second. Not two William Hastings. Give me a Zuckerberg. Now, I'm not sure if all of you can see yet. You can't see then. Now you can see. Paul has sight. Sight. Okay, now can everybody see this starting page? Nope. No. It's black. Nope, it's black. Oh, because you're not on the right sheet. Okay, now you can see though. I can see the yawning portal, the sunless city. Do you see all of your icons on it? Mm. Top right? Yes. There? Yes. Everybody can see those? And I can move mine. There you can. Yeah. 
Okay. No. Thanks a lot. <laughs> You're not allowed to do that. All right. Okay. So, um, you are all an adventuring party. You have come to the town of Oakhurst at the request of sorry, this person's name. Um, at the request of Carolyn Hukrell Creely Hukreely, um, the matriarch of an important family in the area, and a party of adventurers, including two of her uh, two members of her family, uh, went into this area called the Sunless Citadel and. Uh, have not returned. She wants somebody to go and find them, and failing to find them, to find proof of their deaths, and bring back their signet rings. She is offering a reward of 125 gold pieces per character per ring. So if you get back both rings, you would each get 250 gold. Baller! Yeah, much golds. Um, the only things that you that you all know about this area coming in. You've heard of the town of Oakhurst, and you've heard of this nearby ruins called the Sunless Citadel. You know that the Sunless Citadel is found at the bottom of a ravine near the town. Nobody knows why it's at the bottom of this ravine, what these ruins are doing down there. Um, and you know that uh, a goblin tribe infesting the ruins um, sells a single piece of magical fruit to the highest bidder in Oakhurst once every midsummer. And they've been doing this for the last 12 years. Fruit sells for around 50 gold, about all the townsfolk can bring themselves to pay. The fruit, which appears to be an apple of perfect hue, heals those who suffer from any disease or other ailment. The villagers have planted the seeds at the center of the fruit, um, but have never managed to grow a tree. The saplings grow and then disappear shortly after they reach about two feet in height. They're stolen and nobody knows how. Um, Oakhurst is about has about 900 residents, mostly humans. There are some halflings and a scattering of other races. Uh, it's a fairly standard town. It's got a village hall, a general store, a shrine, a jail, a blacksmith, and the old boar inn. Um, you have been given directions to get to the Sun of the Citadel. It's very close to town. It's only a few miles away. If you would like to, you can spend some time in town trying to gather more information, or you can set out immediately. What's all these rolls? Um, I, yeah, I think we should get a little more information. <clears throat> um, like, for instance, this place is supposedly inhabited by a goblin tribe that is uh, selling fruit once a year. We should figure out what, like, what people know about this tribe, uh, whether they're friendly or not. You know, if we can avoid a fight. In the citadel, it might make it easier to find the rings. So the goblins right, so you live guys in the citadel. They, yeah, they they are in the ruins. The sunless citadel, the, ru the ruins of the sunless citadel are home to a tribe of goblins. So they're they're down in this ravine. Um, they are hostile to uh, people in the area. They have been known to attack people who get too close to the sunless citadel. Um, but they don't raid the town, and they send an unarmed representative with the fruit every midsummer. It's almost midsummer now, in fact, you've arrived just about a week or two before midsummer. I mean we could wait a week or two. <laughs> <laughs> just chill out. Just kill the goblin that comes in, that'll that'll help. <laughs> oh I meant and buy the fruit and I don't know, take it to the goblins and shove it to their faces. I'm not quite sure where I'm going with this. <laughs> It's their fruit! <laughs> Thank you for giving it back to us, now we will sell it again. <laughs> Go and eat you it in know? front of them. <laughs> I drink your milkshake. <laughs> Fuck you, goblins. Uh, sorry, what was that, Ben? Do we know about how many goblins are there? Try it's not sort of vague. It's not a huge number. If there were, if it was a really large group, they would be raiding more. So it must be a fairly small number of goblins. Um, they're not willing to uh, attack the town or or uh, be too bold with them. So that's probably a fairly small group, relatively speaking. I mean, you know, less than a hundred. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So they send a single unarmed representative with the fruit. Yes. Once every twelve years at midsummer. 
Wait, once every 12 years? Sorry, once every year for 12 years. Okay. I apologize. Once a, once a year for the last 12 years. So this guy just wanders into town with a fruit, and the town the town members let him go. They money. they don't remember to, um, the exact circumstances of the first visit, but by this time it's become fairly commonplace. This one goblin will come with this magical fruit and uh, auction it to the highest bidder. Okay. Um, I'd be interested if if the rest of the party is in in waiting around for a week and kind of seeing how this auction goes down. Um, the uh, the matron uh, who sent you, who's summoned you here is urgent, or is, uh, sorry, not urgent, is adamant that you start as soon as possible. She really hopes that her uh, grandchildren might still be alive, although she knows it's not extremely likely. So you probably already said this. Why were they down there in the first place? The same reason you're going in, mostly. Glory, adventure, loot, curiosity. Meddlesome right. teenagers, I think, is the correct yeah. word. It was, a, it was a party of adventurers. Two of them were the, the members of this family, um, a fighter and a wizard, and then also a, uh, a paladin who is not a local and a ranger. Alright. And how long ago was that again? Uh, about a month ago. We should probably find them and bury their bodies properly. So you said there's going to be a fighter and a uh, wizard, right? Um, there's th the ones that went in were a fighter, a wizard, a ranger, and a paladin. Well, this picture here shows power. a fighter, a wizard, and possibly a super like magic heavy ranger. You don't know anything about that picture. Okay, sorry, I forgot all about that. <laughs> yeah, well, Jeez, meta gaming, Paul. <laughs> yeah, meta game much? Your character loses half his hit points. Eh, um, you can heal them, it's fine. <laughs> it's like, that's not that many hit points. It's not that much damage. <laughs> that's what, three Come hit on. points? <laughs> He's a cleric. I have a yeah, lot. I think he has the most of anybody. And might maybe tied yep. with you. Well, Therese will have him beat when she joins, because she's well, a barbarian yeah. and they cheat. Okay, well, that's a good point about the lady kind of urgently hoping her people are still alive. Or dead, um, you know? They could dead. be dead. <laughs> That's fine with Nick. <laughs> Finding out one way or another. Um, so, yeah, maybe maybe we should be off. The fruit maybe is just of secondary importance. Although it's kind of weird. I mean, if we get the goblins, maybe we can get some fruit for free. Yeah. Maybe if we kill the golden goose, we'll get more eggs. I mean, we're not going like to stay around until next year, so I don't see why we won't care. Um... I do need to buy some supplies in town before we go. Okay. Um, but other than that, there's nothing keeping me here, I guess. Uh, we I all get a standard about, like a, a dunge dungeoneers or adventurers pack, right? I don't have anything like that. The rest of you do. Oh, yeah, <laughs> okay. The rest of us do. I had to pick between a, like a adventuring pack and a, a cleric pack, basically. Yeah, Nick. Yeah. Nick is a broke son of a well, bitch. Well, you chose poorly. <laughs> he has no monies. Okay. Um, so, uh, Nick, there is a general store run by the the uh, the woman who's sending you to find her family members. So you can buy anything you need from there. Okay. Um, there's also a blacksmith if you need anything. You know, you need any metal or tools or weapons. Okay. Um, you're not going to find anything magical. It's a pretty small village, but any common uh, items. Sure. Um, how far outside of town is this place again, the Sunless Citadel? About a... uh, the Sunless Citadel is seven miles outside of town. Okay, so it's less than a day out. Yeah, right. it's it's a couple of hours of marching. Okay. Uh, I hope we well, can go I more think... than a mile an hour. Yeah, <laughs> it's 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 a like a, a brisk morning's walk. For you guys, you could probably make it in three hours or two and a half, depending on how fast you're walking. I'm just, I'm gonna buy a sling, some sling bullets, um, five days rations of water, glass salt, or uh, water skin. So I'll take care of that. Okay. Yeah, you can. Th they'll just charge you the standard rate. Their their desire to gouge outsiders is offset by you be being willing to go and find their uh, their townspeople. Oh, also uh, by being joke. armed to the teeth. <laughs> there are nine hundred of them. <laughs> 
And you're level one. <laughs> you're not that scary. What are we talking about? There's five of us. We got this. Um, Joe, we were talking yeah. about this before, but we didn't make a decision. I would like to not bother with ammo if that's fine with you. Sorry, say that one more time. I'd like to not bother with ammo if that's fine with you. Yeah, you don't need to bother with ammo. Yeah. yeah. Just, we're talking about bowling. Oh, ammo. right. Yes, of course. That's fine. Um, in case, uh, Collins, um, I told Ben that if they don't want to track ammo and keep track of it and stuff, they don't have to. That's a that's an optional difficulty that they can choose to inflict on themselves or not. The same would, of course, go for you, but I think that you're fine with tracking your sling bullets, and sling bullets are easier to recover. <laughs> Save image. <sighs> okay. Um, so, yes, Nick is able to buy any supplies that he wants. Do the rest of you want to do anything while he's off doing that? You could, uh... I want to ask about um, rations, Joe, how we work on that. Um, you start with 10. Uh, none of these adventures should take you more than 10 days. You'll have plenty of uh, opportunity to buy more. But again, if you'd rather just not deal with the hassle, I can just reduce your gold and come on. No, I, ha I have tons of it. I have tons of gold. I'm wondering, do you, do you think I should get up to like 20 rations, you know? Um, That's I mean, it's up to you. You're, you're going into a dungeon, but you're, you're not going into, you know, the Underdark. This is a single location. You doubt that you'll be there for 10 days, and you know that it's a short walk outside of town, so <clears throat> I don't see any reason that you would need to burden yourself with extra supplies. The only way to be a problem is if we like had to hide out in there, in like a corner or something, and couldn't leave. And in that case, you could just eat you, Andros. He's pretty chubby. <laughs> Looks pretty thin to me. Have you seen this picture? No, just a picture of Nick here. Um, can I share this picture? <laughs> You can make my character. Maybe you had to take them all away. Well, I hit show to players. Does that work? Maybe. Maybe not. Doesn't I tried to. Good. I don't know how that works. Anyway, he's fat. Um, <laughs> he's he's five one and like one hundred ninety pounds, something like that. One hundred forty pounds. So, there you go. So I I come with oh, okay. an explorer's <laughs> kit. So I'd like to buy a crowbar, a hammer, um, ten pittons, and ten torches. Thanks. Basically, buy the parts of a dungeoneer's pack that I'm missing. Sure. Um, the price for those is in the player's handbook. Do you want me to look that up for you, or no, do you I've have it? No, I've got it. Okay, great. Yes, those are all available in town. Sweet. Okay. All right, anybody else want to do anything while they're picking up their supplies? No. Not really. I'd like to inquire about the local um, yes. burial customs. Does anybody know what the goblins do with their dead, and what do the townspeople do with their dead? The townspeople are somewhat confused and a little bit contemptuous of the request about the goblins dead. Fair they enough. They don't really care. That's um, fine. They're, they bury their dead. Okay. Uh, they have a local uh, priest of Pelor, Dem Knackle, who uh, says the funeral rites, but they don't have any particular um, right there. Death is sort of a cool. fairly, fairly common and mundane thing for them. People die of accidents, disease, and it's just sort of get on with your life, get back to the fields. Okay. So they they bury them, maybe say a brief remembrance for them, and then they move on. Gotcha racist assholes. I mean, what? <laughs> yes, they're extremely racist against goblins. Goblins are people, too. Not really, <laughs> actually. You need to go read more Terry Pratchett. <laughs> that book was very cool, but also really confusing. It was when he was getting into his refusing to tell you anything stage. It was very annoying. Okay. Um, I, th I think I'm good. Is there... Uh, I... If there's a bar or stuff, can we, like, go hang out and maybe gather rumors? Like, has anybody been to the Sunless Citadel? Anybody been back? Like, what's the history behind it? Do we yes, know you can. how it was um, built? You, there is an inn, and you can go and uh, spend some time there, drink, and see if you can pick up any rumors. Sweet. Uh, roll um, a d6 for every hour that you want to spend uh, at the, the inn. I figure we start tomorrow morning. Does that make agree with people? 
If you're gonna spend the if you're gonna spend the whole day in the end, then I can just. Oh, what time uh, is it now? Many. It's morning. It's pretty early morning. Oh fuck. So you could spend like you know, <laughs> twelve hours in the town and then sleep and then head out the next day. It's yeah. probably just two or three hours to the Citadel. Why don't we just spend a couple hours and then try and get to the yeah, Citadel? I'll spend two hours trying to like gather rumors and history at the inn, and I'll I'll buy a reasonable amount of drinks for people. Okay, go ahead and go ahead and roll. Yeah, two d six. Okay. Um. So while you're drinking at the inn, uh, a fairly haggard-looking uh, man comes in, um, gets a dr gets a drink, and sits next to you. And you strike up a conversation with him, and he's not very talkative, but he does tell you that he's a cattle herder. There are a couple of them in the town, and they've been having trouble lately because they're not willing to graze their stock very far from the town. They've been uh, kept close by tales of new monsters that have been harassing people by night. Uh, from time to time, cattle and people have gone out alone at night and been found dead the next day, bearing dozens of needle-like wounds. No one has seen the creatures that caused this damage, nor do they leave a discernible trail, even though there are skilled hunters and trackers in the town. Nobody is able to figure out what's been doing this. So, um, when you find these creatures, cattle, with needle-like holes in them, is their blood all gone? Have you heard of a chupacabra? <laughs> Well, I mean, some of their blood is gone. <laughs> Mostly it's on the ground around them, but... But it hasn't all been drunk? <laughs> drunk? No, they've been stabbed. Like by daggers or teeth or claws? Hell, man, I don't know. Okay. We don't spend a lot of time looking at them to figure it out. We bury them and move on with our lives. And some more to town, curiosity keep the might lit. help you survive better. Oh, I know curiosity is what got those poor bastards killed. Fair enough. <laughs> I want somebody else to be curious. I'll drink and wait. Yeah, I'll buy him another beer. Um, also, while you were there, the uh, the barkeep, appreciating your business, mm -hmm. tells you the last time um, that anybody, aside from the townsfolk who went into the Citadel, was around asking questions about it, was around 13 years ago when a grim and serious looking human named Balak stopped by. He had a very large pet frog. He went off towards the Sunless Citadel and he was never seen again. Man, I kind of want a pet frog now. I wouldn't want that pet frog. I think it was messed up. Maybe it eats shit. <laughs> he laughs. Okay, named. What was his name? The human? Yeah. Or the barkeep? Mm, the human. Belak. Okay, cool. Odd that that was 13 years ago and the goblins started selling fruit 12 years ago. wonder if they, like, planted his body and it turned into a tree or something. Can't trust somebody with a giant pet frog. Maybe the frog <laughs> turned into a tree. It sounds like your brain's turning into a tree. <laughs> this you place back is weird, man. the glasses. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I think I think I'm I'm we're pretty good to go. I don't think these townspeople are bright enough that they're gonna know much. So um, and now I'm kind of suspecting the goblins might have been killing those things. If it's a bunch of tiny stab wounds, you can imagine like a whole horde of goblins with daggers out just pummeling things to death. Although I'm surprised they wouldn't like take off the cow and eat it. But if you guys are ready, I'm ready to go head out. Might as yep. well get this show on the road, bury more bodies. Hmm. All right. Um, so you guys are leaving around like mid morning or noon ish. Um, mid morning. Okay. So it, it's going to take you about three hours to get to the citadel uh, or to the ravine in which the citadel can be found. There's no serious obstacles along the way, and the uh, the place you're looking for is very very close to the main road. The old road which you take out of town passes to the east of a narrow ravine. At the road's closest approach to the cleft, several broken pillars jut from the earth where the ravine widens. Two of the pillars stand upright, but most lean atop sloped earth. Others are broken, and several have apparently fallen into the dark depths. A few similar pillars are visible on the opposite side of the ravine. A sturdy knotted rope is tied to one of the leaning pillars on this side of the ravine. Uh, is, is this the citadel? The citadel is at the bottom of the ravine. 
Remember, it was it, it's yep. at the bottom of this ravine. You don't know. Nobody knows why. I'd like to examine these pillars. Um, the pillars are worn and broken, and there is graffiti and dwarvish on most of them. There's no uh, other, uh, like other than the graffiti. There, there. Um, there's no other engraving or anything on them. No, they're ancient pillars, but they appear to be just functional. They were not. They were not decorative. Okay. What um, the graffiti say? Um, it is in uh, Goblin. Does anybody who can read Dwarfish also speak Goblin? Well, um, I I have a, a spell called Comprehend Languages. Okay. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna just take a minute. Uh, this is a ritual. I'm gonna prepare a ritual. Uh, and. Uh, this will allow me to. Uh, <clears throat> I can understand the literal meaning of any uh, written language that I can see. So I'll I'll trace my hands over the uh, over the words. So they're pretty basic. They're mostly crude, uh, grammatically unsound threats and warnings against anybody who comes in. You know, this place dead come here and die, that kind of thing. It's, it appears to be a warning to keep any potential intruders away, written by uh, the goblins who live in, the, in this ravine. Okay. Well, the goblins seem to be uh, intent on keeping trespassers out. Doesn't seem too special. Well, that's boring. I was hoping they'd have a few good jokes at least. Graffiti's usually good for a laugh. It's a pretty sad place that can't even get a joke about death. <clears throat> I, I look down and try and see where the rope goes. <clears throat> Sorry, I just took a bite of something. Um, the ravine runs for several miles in either direction. It's a long slit in the earth. It has an about it looks like it's about 30 feet wide and about 30 feet deep all along the ravine. Uh, the rope that you see tied to the pillars is in pretty good condition. Couldn't have been tied there any longer than two or three weeks ago. You can also see older weathered handholds and footholds carved into the cliff face. They look very small, probably carved by the goblins. You would think that you could probably climb down the knotted rope really easily. It's set up by somebody who knows what they were doing to make a climb into the ravine easier. Okay, well, who wants to go down first? Uh, why don't you? Okay. <laughs> I'm going to grab on, and before I descend the rope, I'm just going to yank it really hard and make sure it's tied tight. I assume it is, and if it is, I'm going to hand over hand drop down the rope. Okay. Um, go ahead and... Let's see... Go ahead and make a perception check for me. Let's see if this works. Come on. I clicked it. Did that work? No. Perception. Perception. How do I make a... Oh, sorry. I apparently made three. Um, okay. Five. Whoa. Wow. <laughs> You made a lot. <laughs> it was laggy. Was very perceptive. <laughs> if you want to, you can use the drop down at the bottom where it says as to change it so it's not Nick R rolling, but instead uh, oh, right. your character. Yeah. It's just a flavor thing, but just wanted to make sure you're aware of that. Um, I think. Okay. Uh, you don't see anything. Oh, that's comforting. So is the rest of the party going to wait until you reach the bottom, or are they going to be... I'm going to wait and let him see. Uh, oh, yeah. You know, we'll see if this rope holds. Yeah, no, one, one at a time is plenty. Wait till, wait till I get down. Yeah, All right, so... Uh, it's dark. Do you want to use a torch so you can see? I've got dark vision. Oh, okay. Oh, sweet. Um, I'm trying... So, we've got two dwarves here, right? Mm -hmm, They've yep. got dark vision. Got two... P 
puny ones here, right? They don't have dark vision. Humans, I mean. Yeah, one one at the moment, and one who's a secret um, companion who's not doing anything yet because she's being sneaky. That's Therese, who's not actually here. Okay. So her character is a ghost. Cool. No. Well, oh. I'll look around and I'll I'll. Uh, if I can't see anything, Sorry, so you reach the bottom. Yeah, I reach the bottom, and if I don't see anything moving within sight, um, I'll call for the others to come on down. And All right, go ahead and uh, make an initiative roll. Oh, that was fun. Okay, let's see. Okay, now let's see if I can do this. Who uh, giant rat? Nice. Yes. Um, as you uh, reach the platform and start to look around, three giant rats skitter out of the debris and r um, rubble surrounding the platform, uh, and they immediately move to attack you. Uh, question that's too late, but as a paladin, I have no spells at level one, right? I believe that's correct. Okay. I'm not sure about this. <laughs> you can't die, though, right? You have your little thing. That's from being an orc, yes. I just am trying to make sure I'm not like... Okay, Divine Sense Land Hands. Yeah, I got spell slots at level 2. Okay, cool. Your your party mates at the top of the um, ravine uh, would have range. If they have range attacks, they can hit them from there. Cool. Yeah, if we could see them. Right. Now, are yeah. they moving in next to me? Yes, they have all swarmed you and are about to attack. Motherfucker. Okay. How fast does it take to go down that rope, Joe? Uh, it depends on how much you're willing to risk it. If you go carefully, the same way that um, the same way that uh, uh, Nick did, it would probably take you two rounds. If you uh, want to take a little risk and basically try to run down it, you could do it in one, but you'd have to make a roll to make sure you don't fall. Let's make a roll. Hmm. Uh, dex roll a uh, acrobatics. Acrobatics. Actually, no. That, you can make acrobatics or athletics. And how far is it down to the ground in case I have 30 failed? feet. Don't worry. You... Falling isn't that bad in D&D. It's pretty bad. I think every 10 feet you fall, you roll a D6 for damage or something like that. So it could a 30-foot fall could kill any one of you. Yeah. Although it's kind of funny because once you get to like level 5 or 6... Like a hundred foot fall isn't actually that bad. Yeah, it's kind of weird. Like it gets it, it gets problematic. Like if you're level fifteen, it's like oh, a two hundred foot fall. I'll just jump off. How far away is, uh, are the rats from where we are at the top? <laughs> uh, they are thirty feet from you, motherfucker. Can we see the rats from the top? Uh, you can. Yes, if you have uh, it, if you have dark vision, you can see them easily. If you don't, you can just see the they're sort of dim shapes swarming around the orc. So, all right. So you only you take uh, nine damage, Nick. <laughs> Can I roll for initiative? Are as you well, sure? Or you just yes. Go after the, um, them? I see twelve. Yeah. So, so the reason you're seeing twelve is because that second roll, one of the, it rolled a crit on one of its rolls, but they don't have advantage, so okay. they only use the first roll. Gotcha. So they only use the base one, which is. Uh, oh, I'm uh, I'm feeling pretty. Mm -hmm. Pretty hurt. Wait, why am I not seeing? Hey, Nick, why am I not seeing an initiative tracker here? Uh, have you? You have it? to open it. How do I open it? It's on the left hand side, it's a little clock icon. Ah. Why is giant rat on there twice? Mm, it's only on there once. That I okay. See. Um. I don't know why that didn't work correctly. I'll be back in just a second. Oh, it's his turn. <laughs> Actually, no, I'm sorry. It's it's uh, uh, Nick. It's your turn. Mine. Yeah. Yeah. Cause fuck this what shit. effects? Um, initiative. Dexterity. And sometimes feats, but mainly and sometimes dexterity. Feats. 
Oh, I can make another initiative roll. I get advantage. Uh, w what? Because I'm a ranger. You have advantage oh, on initiative roll? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, rangers get that because they're... <laughs> nice. This is terrible. Oh, jeez. Okay. Um, yeah, I can see so how do we decide this uh, if we're tied like this? Well, you're supposed to use the tiebreaker of your um, dexterity, but you have the same dexterity. Um, I'm going to say that you go wait, first, though, because otherwise we have to wait. Yeah, you have the same oh, dexterity. Wow. What does he have that gives him such a huge bonus, then? Now, does he go before the rats? No, they had a, they attacked you by surprise. That makes sense. They started the combat by attacking you. Sorry, yeah. Yeah, Nick, what are you getting to give you a bonus 8.16 to your initiative, uh, Collins? Um, that's my dexterity modifier. It's just a tiebreaker. No, the, uh, he has 8 because oh. he has a feat that gives him an oh, initiative yeah. bonus. I have, I'm alert. I have a feat that gives me a good initiative. Okay, and how do you get feats again? Yeah. As a variant human, you get one at level one. Otherwise, every time that you get a stat increase, you can you can choose to forsake the stat increase and instead get a feat. Yeah. What's a variant human? It's just that normally humans get plus one to every stat, but people thought that was kind of stupid, so there's a commonly accepted variant where you get plus one to two stats instead of all six of them, and you get a feat. Mm, all right. Because feats are sexy. Because feats are really cool, yeah. So, um, I don't know why that didn't... Actually, I guess I do know why it didn't uh, do the turn order right. So, um, I can just do it this way, right? Uh, Guam Dill... No, why? I mean, I rolled a one, so I'm pretty sure that's what I got. Okay. Uh, you, oh, I can't tell you. Well, you have to have a weird ass name, Nick. Andros. I was going to say, my name is Zach. That's pretty damn plain. <laughs> yes, why you also got to be the name, same name as somebody else. <laughs> my name's not weird, it's just Greek. Same as weird. <laughs> um, and then where is Zach? What did Zach roll? Thirteen. Zach. Normally we shouldn't need to do this. I screwed up and didn't have this thing open, so that's my fault. Um. So the rats got a surprise round. Yeah. So the rats got a surprise round. Um, and it is now you, Andros's turn. Okay. Um, and I can vaguely see these shadowy figures. Yes, like. you can see shapes. Um, it's a, They're 30 feet down from you, so uh, but it's in an open chasm and it's almost noon when you arrive. So the light's shining down into this okay. so immense I make, cavern. I can make an attack without disadvantage. Correct. Okay, uh, well I'm going to uh, pull my sling off my belt and uh, try and hit one of them. Oh. Also, Joe, Am I supposed to be seeing something? Because I got just black screen. Uh, no, sorry, uh, you're not on the. You're you're not here yet, <laughs> so you can't see anything. Um, okay. But I can shoot at the rats when it's my turn. Yes, you're just shooting straight down. Um, okay. A second here. There we go. Okay, so Nick, you hit. Uh, which one are you shoot? Oh, sorry, you can't see. I'm shooting at one of them that are around him. Okay, I'll just do it to yeah, just pick one. this one. No, no. I don't know. Alright, to... so you hit, uh, you hit solidly, and the rat recoils. It doesn't, see, it didn't see the attack incoming, and so it's a little surprised. Um, but it's not dead. It is now William's turn. I shoot at the same rat he attacked. Okay. Oof. Do you have anything that gives you advantage? Well, if they hadn't already gone, I would have. If they had, okay. why? 
Uh, he, if he gets anybody who he attacks who has not yet taken a turn, he has advantage against them. So it only applies in the first round, but they got a surprise round, so. If he's hidden from the rats, he should have advantage. Oh, that's right. Yes, yeah, so you do. So that hits. So you. Not that. Nope, nope, nope. You. Nice call. Card. That rat is slain. He is stuck to the ground with an arrow directly through his spine. And who did that? William? Uh, yes. Hastings. William Hastings. William's my man. The rats are, uh, shocked by the attack. They didn't- they thought they were just attacking one, and now they're suddenly they're taking damage from somebody they can't see. They recoil for a moment, hissing. I get an attack of opportunity when they move away from me. They disengaged. What?! They're not- you're getting- two rats are skipping their turns. Don't be greedy, bro. <laughs> oh, sorry, I didn't realize nothing. that was their turn. Yeah, that was their whole turn. Okay. They just backed up and <laughs> okay. freaked out. That's fine. And yes, you can always use your action to disengage from being in combat with somebody without um, taking an opportunity attack. As long as you don't do anything else that turn. Is you can then right? move. You can use your action to disengage and then a movement to move. I you just didn't can't know also that. attack. Yes, it's extremely annoying. So it is Zach's turn. Sweet. Zach will move over here and pull out his great scythe and attempt to slice the puny rat in half. He will not do that. <laughs> well, what's the rat's AC? You whiff. You whiff. Okay. <laughs> Did you hit? Did he hit him? I can't see. Uh, I nicked his tail. <laughs> I'll get him Probably. next time. <laughs> Glomdil, it is your turn. All right, I'm going to cast Sacred Flame, I think. Okay. I'm still trying to learn my spells here. Yeah, incinerate the rats. On whichever one uh, Nick there just tried to hit. Let me let me do this. Wow, um, showing me up. This is a much smarter way to do this. All right. Can you guys see now? I'm not sure. I'm still getting used to this. I can see fine. I can't Sorry. see anything. It's a black screen. Hold on. Uh, ben, you have dark vision, right? No, I'm a human. Why would I have dark vision? No, Paul has dark vision. Sorry, you I don't. I have dark vision, yes. You have sight, but you do not emit light. Okay, right back. now can everybody see? I, I, can, yeah, I, can, see. I can see my yep. person, and only my person. Right, so it's dark down here. Um, yeah, I can see a lot of stuff, too. Uh, oh yeah, you shouldn't be emitting light. Mm -hmm. I am at light from the glorious god of death. Um, and nobody is carrying a torch, right? No, yeah. At the moment? Nope. Okay. Nope. So, yeah. You you human people can't see anything. Is it that dark? It's only 30 feet down, right? Uh, I don't know how to do dim light. <laughs> I'll just, actually, I'm just going to say everybody can see the light that Nick is emitting for now. Which Nick? You. Okay. He's emitting a lot of light. It's yeah. It's daytime. You can see. Shut up. Everything is fine. It's it's like noon. The sun is shining straight down into here. <laughs> yes, exactly. So you can you should all be able to see. So Glomdale, it's your turn. I think I went. Does that work? Did I roll a D Yes. Okay. Save? So now they need to make a deck save. Sorry. Giant rat. How big are giant rats? Um, very small. Uh, the size of a, you know, medium-sized dog, maybe. Okay. So not like a rodent of unusual size. No, 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 no. They're not that big. Um, where do I do? <laughs> Good luck, Nick. <sighs> there we go. <laughs> you need it. They the rat fails. And is seared. Oh yeah, three. What was damage. that? Three damage. Three damage. Okay. That's not what I wanted. Why do you do this to me? Okay. All right. Um. It is now Euandros's turn. All right. Um. I'll uh, try and. I'm not going to risk hitting Zach in the head. So I'll try and uh, hit the rat that's further away from him. 
Oh, thanks. A kindly party member. Shocking. Uh, you succeed, but he is not slain. He's uh, the, the stone cracks him solidly in the shoulder, and it flinches away and hisses again. But sure. it does not fall. William, your turn. Um, I'm confident my aim. I'm going to shoot the rat near him. Okay. William's my man. He knows how to aim. See? See? You put a bolt directly through its head. <laughs> it doesn't make a note sound. It expires. It's completely slain. And I yell up, hey, William Tell, come on down. <laughs> Oh, right. way. <laughs> giant rat, the last giant rat is going to attack you in a frenzy. And I do that by going here. But he's going to miss. And whiff on the armor. And now it is Zach's turn. Crunch. I. Oh, shoot. I reloaded my page. Let's get this back. And. Ya noob. That's better. Slash at him. Cleave him head to toe. You cut him clean in half, and the tail twitches as it falls off into the darkness. The rats are slain. I step on it and crush the rest of the body just to make sure. You all can have 15 experience. Woohoo! That's right, Nick. You take the total experience of the encounter and divide it by the number of players, right? That's right. Okay. Yes. So you're all still up at the top of the stairs, or at the top of the rope, uh, except for Zach, who is bleeding and alone at the bottom of the rope. Is it clear, Zach? Can I make a request? <laughs> um, hey, no, deny. Can we all gain XP at the same rate, including players that are not here? Yes, we are. Okay, sweet. <laughs> yeah, that's why you got 15, otherwise you would have gotten more. Okay. It would have been really annoying if there had uh, been uh, only four of you, because then I would have had to divide 75 by four, and that would have been dumb. Okay. You would have gotten fractions. Um, so, Zach, what you see, uh, you are on a sandy ledge overlooking a subterranean gulf of darkness to the west. Oh, great. The We're ledge is wide around. but rough. Sandy, rocky debris, and the bones of small animals cover it. A rough-hewn stairwell zigs and zags down the side of the ledge, descending into darkness. The far wall of the chasm is out of your sight. It's just blackness in that direction. Um, and the floor is... You get a faint hint of the floor below you, but it's out of your out of your sight. The floor below me not being what I'm standing on? No, but the, no, okay. but down, down at the very bottom of the page. Like, you're on a pillar, and the bottom of the pillar is out of your sight. You can't see it. I'm going to yell it up. Come on down, guys. Coast is clear. Mm. I head on down the road. A bit dark. Bring a torch. I'll actually light a torch for the humans that are coming down. Okay, so now the sight that you have is legitimate. You have sight. Congratulations. Excellent. Everybody else has sight, but not light. Just making sure that's right. And then Paul has sight and emits light because he has dark vision. Great. So you should all be able to move your characters freely now. Okay. And we're out of... Well, they're climbing top. down. I'm going to skin one of the rats and strap it to my pack. Okay. Time to make some jerky. You're going to strap the, the rat, not the skin, to your back? Yeah. Okay, you're going to be covered with rat blood. <laughs> and stink very badly. <laughs> oh, man. Um, well, I'm coming down. got to commit, right? <laughs> not backing off. Like, all of me right. covered with rat blood? Or just the pack? Well, it's all down your back. Okay. I mean, you just skinned it. Like, you didn't drain it or anything. You just skinned this rat and stuck it on your back. It's gross. That's yeah. fair. Uh, Zach? I'm an Zach, orc. I'm used to it. Can I ask why? It's free food. Don't turn down a free meal. That's what we learned in the garden. I'm going to make the constitution <laughs> check for nausea. <laughs> Go ahead. You vomit. 
<laughs> you're a, you're a Lily Lifford city boy, and you're not you're not hey, okay with hey, this point, giant stinking carnivore. Point it over the edge, over the edge. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so I want to cast light on my mall and just have it emit light all the times. So Hell yeah. How far does that emit light? Uh, 20 foot normal, 20 additional low light. So exactly the same as a torch. Okay. Yeah, I just don't want to carry around a torch. I want to like fight with his glowing mall. Right, so you have a glowing mall. Man. you going to be covered in blood and be useless. Light a torch for humans and they show up with a shiny mall just to show you how. <laughs> Yeah, that's the consideration you get. I tried to be nice. <laughs> okay. I'm not um, people targeting me. <laughs> What's his name? Eudemos? Euandros. Euandros. Mm -hmm. Cool. Well, I'll head down the stairs. Probably carefully. Uh, apparently, that first time was a doozy. Is there anything else you guys want to check? You, anybody got a light they want to drop down and see what's at the bottom? I mean, I can enchant a pebble with light and throw it down. Mm -hmm. Not a bad idea. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good thinking. Is your light a cantrip? I, I, yeah, my light's a cantrip. I can use it all the time. Sweet. <laughs> Yes. All right, I enchant a pebble and uh, throw it off the cliff, just like trying to get it, you know, pretty far down to see what we can see. Okay. As the light passes, it's hard to see because it's moving pretty quickly uh, uh, as it falls. But you see a stair, a switchback staircase is going down, um, and at the bottom you get a faint hint of a, of the uh, the citadel itself, of a, a ruined fortress. There is no noise, and there's a quiet breeze, and you smell a faint smell of dust and rock. And by fortress, right, cool. it looks like a, a castle that's above ground, but it's underground? Yes, you, you didn't get a get very good look at it. You'll get a better look if you get down there. Can I just talk to Glom and be like, this this isn't how dwarves normally build stuff, right? Like, you guys build underground yeah. caverns, not like a fort under the ground. I I don't know what you do, Mostly but this is that. not normal, right? No, it's not. Okay. At least I don't think so, Joe. And no, this is not normal. This looks to you like like a, a human or at least an above ground fortress. This is not something a dwarf would build or a goblin or an orc. And I also have pluses too if I make history checks on buildings, basically, as my dwarf class. So um, if just let me know for the future campaign. So you don't recognize this uh, the, the, the infrastructure used here, um, but it's definitely ancient beyond knowledge um, and not uh, it's not dwarvish in manufacture for sure. But I, I tell the party basically uh, like, I don't recognize this, but it looks really ancient. It's definitely not dwarvish though. I'm going to pentagram myself with the sign of death to ward off any evil. Okay. <laughs> this place is creepy as hell. And we haven't yeah. even gotten down to it yet. <laughs> all right, I just, I guess if we're all good to go, I'll start, I'll start us off. I'm good to go. Yeah, start moving. I'm okay. excited to see what uh, <clears throat> that structure looks like from the inside. I'm, I'm just going to stay uh, 15, 20 feet away from Zach. Glom, would it be better for you or me to go first? Uh, what's your AC? 16. And what's your health point? No, three. three? <laughs> okay, I will go first. I have 12. It, it's it's good for a dwarf to take the lead in these underground areas. Uh, I agree. <laughs> Alright, Joe, do you want to just move turn by turn, or are you just going to say, hey, <laughs> when you get there, roll initiative? Yeah, I'm not going to make you move turn by turn out of combat. I'm sorry, I'm just updating everybody's things so that I can see your hit points That's fine. more easily. Also, Nick, <laughs> why do you have three hit points? I got eaten by rats. That's why I the skinned one. You know, in the well, first then, round. then I want to use a spell slot and heal him. Go for it. I I cast cure wounds. Can you see the bar over me, Joe? 
Yes. Okay. I can see those bars, and I can see. All right. Hit I heal stuff. eight of your uh, health there. Damn. Thanks, Glum. You're a good friend. Yeah, no problem. Nice roll. But I only got one more of those. I only have two spell slots at this level. <laughs> well, it's good to it's burn them. Easy. Burn them early, right? <laughs> yeah, that's exactly right. <laughs> So as you traverse the stairs down, you you get you get a better look at what you saw when you threw the rock. There are uh, rough hewn, five foot wide stairwells that switch back and forth along this pillar, with landings uh, about every twenty feet. Um, and then when you get to the bottom, I have to figure out how to move you all to a new map. Which I don't really know how to do. So I'm an expert. I think you can just select us all and then copy paste like Control C, Control V. That's right. Yeah. Are smart. Okay. I have a light on me though. I'm a fucking badass. Okay. Um. Nick has doppelgangered himself somehow. So what was the order? I'm sorry. Uh, uh Glumdal first, followed by Zach. Um, Zach. Zach. And then I think uh you Andros and then William. I I'm I think I'm in the back. I'm staying yeah, Andros, like fifteen feet behind Zach right now. Yeah. <clears throat> Alright, so um as you get to the bottom of the stairs the stairs empty into a small courtyard, apparently the top of what was once a crenellated battlement. The buried citadel has sunk so far into the earth that the battlement is now level with the surrounding floor. The floor stretches away to the north and south, composed of a layer of treacherous crumbled masonry, which reaches to an unknown depth. To the west looms the surviving structure of what must be the sunless citadel. The tower stands on the west side of the courtyard. The, fort, the, the sunless citadel sorry I missed this description uh, as you climb down the fortress emerges from the darkness the subterranean citadel though impressive seems long forgotten if the lightless windows cracked crenellations and leaning towers are any indication all is quiet feel so like all the area out past the crenellations which um, your characters can see even though I think it's blocking your sight all this is a debris field. It would be uh, extremely difficult and probably hazardous terrain. You, it might give way at any moment. It might eat you up if you go out there, so it looks very dangerous. I can't see shit. Yeah, I can't see anything. Mm -hmm. well, Wait, you can't see anything on this screen at all? I see nope, black. Nothing. black. I can see a token on the very edge of the map. But... Why can you not Ooh, see it? If I, if I, I can see it now. It's just really small. Okay, I just zoom I out my map. Wait, what? Are you looking at the right part? Oh, there it is. I can't see that. Oh, I see. I need to. I think my token's just on the wrong side of the wall, Joe. No. Yeah, there you go. Okay. So those are crenellations on the edge of the room? Yes. Okay. I see. And the tower is over here? I'm going to sound stupid. That's here. the tower, I yes. I know all about, like, that's uh, a door. Texture, but I don't know what a crenellation is. Um, you know how castle walls have, like, the up down like zigzaggy thing so you can shoot arrows through them that's a crenellation the up down thing the okay. up down yeah, thing yeah yeah okay like lego pieces yeah. um well i feel if we have any hope of finding these kids and burying their poor bodies um we'll probably have to search fairly thoroughly so we should probably go through the tower first yeah that sounds good to me Agreed. Lead on. Um, one second. Uh, anybody? Nope. Okay. So you are all on the in the courtyard. Does anybody want to do anything? Um, is there a door into the tower or any sort of entrance? There's a door right here. I think you can see that. Sort of, yeah. That's that little square is. Stop! Paul, make a uh, <laughs> dexterity check for me, please. Fuck. Check for traps. Stop moving yourself back. We don't have a thief, do we? 
Paul, as you, uh, why do you keep warping back? I, I didn't know if, if you want me to literally stop moving. No, 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 I want you where I put you. You're there. <laughs> okay. So, um, as you step on that, uh, part of the, um, masonry, you feel it start to give way under your feet, but luckily, uh, your quick reactions allow you to sort of roll forward and avoid the fall. The, um, floor there is a pit trap. Uh, you see that it is opened up and there is a small pit underneath with some skeletons and things in it. Oh dang. Okay guys, watch out. Looks like this place is falling apart. Or filled with traps. Uh, I'd say it's trapped. Is there, oh. is there any dirt around here? Dirt? Dirt. Uh, and there's sand, right? No, there's stone. The bodies in the um, pit are goblin. Okay, that's what I was going to ask. Um, also, uh, who's, is anybody, sorry, is somebody looking into the pit? I am. That was me, yeah. Uh, make a perception check. Both of us, I assume, right? Yes. Um, try uh, uh, Okay. Hell yeah. Bitches. Um, there is a giant rat in the, uh, pit that is trying to climb out and is about to attack you. Go ahead and roll initiative. How do I... So if I have this out, Nick, when people roll initiative, it should automatically put them up there now? Yeah. Yes. Except for the giant rat. From the button after selecting a token. Well, Think right. Like, yeah, you, you select your token and then... And then with your token selected, you roll initiative? Uh, then with your token selected, there should be a button in the top left corner of your screen. Or you can just roll initiative. Oh, there's also the button. Yeah. Yeah. Either works. Mm -hmm. So, Ben needs to roll? I oh, did. he I did. Weird, it didn't put him on there. Maybe you hit it before I'd actually had it up. Hold on, um, I can fix that. No, I think it just didn't have anything selected. Oh, can uh, yeah, I can I can fix that though. Um, you are a nineteen because you're cool. Oh yeah, I am. My name's off. Okay. Uh, close that. Descending. All right. So, you Andros, it's your turn. Is it still down in the pit? Yes, it's starting to scrabble up the walls when you saw it. Um, <clears throat> I'm just going to jump back and uh, and ready my action with two daggers so if it comes after me I'll defend myself. So I have okay. One I have one dagger. Only one dagger. Not that cool. Alright, William, uh, your turn. Someone playing Overwatch in the background? Yeah. Okay. Uh, that is a miss. You are shooting at the rat as it tries to scramble up the walls, but you are, uh, a little off off your aim, perhaps confused by the trap that almost ate your friend, and you uh, your shot sails wide. Look, man, shooting straight down is harder than you think. It's tough. It's tough. I got you, Will. It's very difficult. Um, Paul, it is your turn. Alright, so can I prepare to smack him with my maul when he gets within range? You can smack him now. Okay, I'll smack him with my maul. You miss. Damn. So no, attacking down is harder than you think. Uh... Well, that's why he didn't have advantage. Normally that rat would have been flanked, but it's at the bottom of the pit, so it's not. Man, I wish I had inspiration right now. Um... It's a giant rat. You're going to be fine. I've now. got three hit points. Oh, no, I've got 11. I'm fine. Sorry. You're fine. Man, the giant rats mauled him last time, okay? He's <laughs> yeah, but that was three of them that had a surprise round. Uh, remembering your previous experience with <laughs> the uh, the rat, you're, you carefully take <laughs> aim and cut this thing clean in half as it tries to climb out of the pit. It is dead. Have these. You all gain five experience. Sweet. You can, you can still hear grinding uh, as the... Um, from the trap itself. Um, did any of the rat parts stick on my scythe? Some blood did. Yeah, whatever. Um, 
I'm going to look around and see if there's any loose rocks or dirt or anything. And if I can find any, I'm going to pile it on top of the skeletons at the bottom of the pit. Okay. Uh, there's plenty of loose rock uh, just outside the crenellations on the battlement. There's It's a rubble field, so it's full of small rocks. Sweet. I've got a small shovel I carry in my pack, if that makes it any faster. Mm. Okay. Does uh, anybody else want to do anything here? Um, now that we're I'll here... To take the rocks over. Speed things up. Sweet. Sweet. Alright, and now that we're here, I want to make a history check on the uh, stonework of this place. Um, again, as, as previously, you don't recognize the, the make. It looks extremely ancient, um, but it predates your knowledge of stonework entirely. Right, um, you do see sense. various uh, uh, designs and motifs that are reminiscent of uh, dragons and their um, minions, but nothing that you recognize specifically. All right. Any text written on the walls or around the doorway or anything? Not here, no. All right, uh, Ben put, put forward that I, I want to check to see if it was made to be built on the surface and sank down, or was it built like to fit in this cavern or wherever um, we are? Go ahead and make a history check. All right, so I have a stone-cutting racial passive that says whenever you make a, a history check related to the origin of stonework, uh -huh. you are considered proficient in the history skill and add double your proficiency bonus. Okay, so, so you how add do I do four. That? Just, just make your roll and then add four manually. Even though I probably have a plus, I already have a plus two because I think I'm proficient in history. Yeah. So you have you have a um, where are you? You are Glomdell history. So you have a two bonus. Um, are you proficient in in history? I am proficient in history, and then I'm also have a racial. So, so you add another two a, then. You, it's okay, it's going to so be a, a plus two. four. All right. So, so I got a, get a nineteen. 19. Um, and sorry, that will. Oh yes, uh, this definitely was not built to be underground. Uh, something sunk this fortress underground. Probably magic. I mean, it's the only thing that makes sense. Um, and you assume, based on the quality of the stonework, that there were also residual enchantments in the stone that protected the fortress from being obliterated when it uh, was uh, sunk into the earth. All right, I, I tell the group that. Uh, hey, everyone. Does. So, what I can tell, I don't really. I still don't know much about this stonework. It looks too ancient. But it definitely looked like it meant to be on the surface a long time ago. Something must have sunk it down this low. But what I have no thought? idea what. I do see little uh, reminiscence of dragon motifs around here, but that's all I have. No! <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm not good enough. <laughs> no, there's a, a, like a, a blackout shade thing that we got, and it absolutely will not stay up. It's a piece, <laughs> piece of crap. Extremely annoying. Um, okay. Um, it's good to have a dwarf along sometimes, Glom. This place is creeping me out, but at least it was built normally at some point. Maybe. <laughs> In theory. Okay, so, uh, Nick, while you're gathering stones, the trap snaps back closed. Um so that it looks like a normal part of the floor again. You still know where it is, obviously, but it's closed now. Uh, I take out a piece of chalk and I write a bit, I draw a big X on it. <laughs> nice. Um, can I trip it again safely and jam a rock inside? Actually, no, never right. mind. It's, I drop a it's, it's serving as like a cover for these bodies. It's a good thing. I'll leave it okay, alone. So you're just going to leave yeah. it as is? Yeah, that's fine. Alright. Okay. Alright. Uh, Okay, that's yeah. So that that's all you see on the on the outside here. There is a door um, there which is not locked. All right. Well, then, as the front guy, I will go in front of the door. Is there another trap here? Nope, no traps. All right, and I open the door. Do we have anybody who okay. can check for traps, or do we just like? <laughs> yeah, you can make you can make a uh, um, barge on in. Extra traps at any kind. Yeah. Oh, okay. At any time. I wasn't sure if Klom was doing that. It was just like eh. uh, <laughs> I push the door and see if it's. He was checking for traps with his big dumb ass, just <laughs> okay. by getting in the way. Excellent. Yeah, checking for traps so that you know when I die, you guys will know not to go there. It's a very clever plan. So, Paul, this looks. To, you're pretty sure that this was a tower uh, when the fortress was still above ground. It's now just the shell of a tower. It's a circular area, cobbled with cracked granite, 
upon which are sprawled the bodies of four goblins apparently slain in combat. One corpse stands with its back against the western wall, the spear that killed it still skewering it and holding it upright. There are three wooden doors leading from this area. A hollow tower of loose masonry reaches 30 feet into the air, but the intervening floors and stairs are gone except for a couple of crumbled ledges. Okay, so we can't climb up it. No. But there it's, is it's something at the so top. The doors, in case you can't see, are here, here, and here. I missed all no, nothing's the top. It's, it's just a hollow I cylinder. Didn't see anything there when you did stuff? Oh, uh, oh crap, am I on the wrong layer? How about uh, now? I can see now. Yeah, okay. There's a door, there's a door. Um. Okay. Three doors? Alright. Oh, and there? No, not there. Oh, no, no, there. Yeah, we need we need to move in, otherwise we can't see. Yeah. Um, okay. All right. I'll slide uh, in. About how long have the goblins been dead? Yeah, can I make an investigation check to see how long the goblins have been dead, and about how strong something would have to be to shove a spear through the goblin into the wall and put it there? The stone is is sort of crumbling a bit, so a really solid stab um, could probably lodge the spear, you know, enough to hold up a goblin. Goblins aren't terribly heavy. Um, they look to have been killed fairly recently. They're, the blood is dried on the ground, but it's still recognizable, and they are corpses, not skeletons. There. I'm going to drag the bodies to the trap and toss them down with their friends. Hmm. Uh, do I need to make a strength check to rest the spear? Um, no, uh, but when you, if you remove the spear pinning the goblin to the wall, you see that there are draconic runes on the wall behind it. Fuck. <laughs> Can anybody read Draconic? Well, I'm actually I can read nope. anything. That's right, you could read anything if you used a spell. <laughs> Nobody can read it without a spell, though. It's, it's active right now. It's active for an hour. Oh, it's active for an hour? Um, yeah, in that case, you can read it. Uh, the, the runes read Arsh, uh, Ashardalon. They Looks like that. a name. Ashardalon. I'll spell that out for you. Probably a demon. Were the goblins nibbled on, did it look like? Say, yes. by giant rats? Yes, they had definitely been, been chewed on by rats. Alright. Uh, and do we see anything up the tower? Like, how close is the closest, like, broken ledge? Um, <clears throat> the nearest ledge is probably about ten feet above your heads, but it's, there's nothing. Excuse me there. There's nothing there. It was uh, This was a tower, but all the floors are gone and the ceiling's gone. There's nothing in here. Okay, so there's literally nothing we can go through. No, there's like the barely the remnants of what you can recognize. Oh, once upon a time there were stairs there, but or, or ledges there, but that's it. Nothing else. So there's no jumping puzzle to the top to get a treasure box? <laughs> you can try. Uh, <laughs> I'll just there, for <laughs> falling damage. Yeah, there's a grimoire up there. Great. Yeah. <laughs> no offense. I can close that. Okay. And this is this is the only way there wasn't a door in the previous room, right? This was the only door? Well there's the door to lead here, but that's it. Yeah. Okay. This is the entrance to the citadel. And there's three new doors here or two? Two new doors. Two new doors. One of them is the one you came in. Well, I'm tempted to go with the right wall theory if you guys are familiar with that. No one works for me. Okay. <laughs> I thought it was left wall. Am I wrong? Is it right? Either way works. You just need to pick one. Either. I think most people say left wall because that way you have your right hand free and most people are right handed, but it's, yeah, either way works. I have no preference. Alright, we can go right. That sounds good. Cool. Um, yeah, let's go right. Okay, moment. Okay. I mean, after all, we know that left-handed people are sinister, so... It's true, they're, they're really just not trustworthy. Hold on a second, where is... Um... So this uh, this corridor is is entirely empty. There are three doors ahead of you: one on the left, one on the right, and one straight ahead. I want to make a quick uh, perception for traps check. 
Go ahead and roll. Ah, uh, yeah. You don't notice anything amiss. This seems like just an ordinary passageway. All right. Well, if you guys are cool with this, I'm going to start going. Cool. Again, Joe, how do you want to work with this? Do we want to I'll, only be I'll, I'll on force or? more strict movement uh, if I feel like it. The main problem, if you don't move coordinated, is something might attack you when you guys are spread out, mm -hmm. and then it will be more difficult to reach your friends. All right. Well, I'm going to move to I think this door since we're staying right, and then wait for you guys and get in. So, Joe, I went like. Eh. There? Okay. Is there any traps along the way that I triggered? Nope, nothing happens. I hear that. I'll follow. Wait a minute. No, is that door? Trap. No, 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 oh, sorry. No. I just want, it didn't look like the door ahead of you was blocking your sight, but it is. Alright, I uh, check the door for traps, I guess? I mean, I don't check it for traps, I'm just going. You know what? Okay. I'm a dwarf, I can take it. So you're opening the door? Yes, I take the trap. Nothing happens. God dang. I move in. It's an entirely boring door containing an entirely boring room. And that is an entirely boring room with nothing in it. Can we uh... investigate the boring room <laughs> with nothing in it? <laughs> I just want to just want to scan it real quick. It's a ruined chamber empty of all but a litter of rocky debris. Great. What's under the that are of rocky debris. No, there's like scattered <laughs> pebbles and things. There's nothing under it. Well, you know, an abandoned room can always be a good place to hide out if you need to. That's true. That's a good point. All right. Do you guys want to go uh, down then, or do you guys want to go just keep falling right, go to the like out of this hall? Uh, thank you. Just right. stay right. All right. I go to this spot and I uh, open the uh, door to the next room. Okay, one moment. Um, just make sure I'm looking at the right place. Alright, uh, I have to keep changing layers. So you open this door. Oh, it's just a dragon, that's fine. It's not a dragon. Just wait. Dragon boy, um, he's our friend. Crudely execute, executed symbols and glyphs scribed in bright green dye decorate this large and irregularly shaped crumbling chamber. A large pit in the center shows evidence of a recent fire, and a metallic cage in the middle of the southern wall contains a gaping hole and stands empty. A small wooden bench draped with green cloth is next to the cage, and several objects rest on it. A bedroll lies near the wooden bench, and the sound of whimpering comes from inside it. That's... That's where the whimpering is coming from. The sound of whimpering comes from inside the... Bedroll. Bedroll. Over here. Mm-hmm. Okay. Actually, I'm sorry, he's not in the right place. He should be there. That's the cage. Which okay, is yeah, broken open. I thought open. cage was broken open in a dragon. No, no, no. That's a kobold. He is uh, pathetic and weak. Oh. Uh, what do kobolds speak? Um, some speak common. I can understand Draconic, literally. Not, um, I don't know any idioms, but... So he doesn't, he hasn't noticed you, he's just weeping in his bedroll. The kobold is? Or the... Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm sorry, Nick, you can still, or sorry, Collins, you can still read Draconic, right? I can read and understand it, yes. The symbols on the wall are crudely formed in Draconic, and they just say, Here there be dragons, over and over again. Okay, cool. I can't actually read it unless I am touching it, but I would have done that. <laughs> oh, great, dragons. So, the kobold is in his bedroll, and the cage yes. is a separate thing. Is yes, there any the cage is, is here, and the bedroll is there. Is there any whimpering coming from the cage? No, the cage is clearly empty. You can see into it, and there's nothing there. I'm I'm going to step forward very slowly with my palms out, um, and advance towards him, in non-threateningly until he notices. Um, he doesn't. He hasn't noticed you yet. He's um, you, as you get closer, you realize he's he looks like he's probably asleep and just tossing and turning in his dreams. Okay. Um. I'm going to motion to my heavily armed comrades to keep back, and I'm going to 
clear my throat loudly. He sort of jumps upright and puts his back against the wall. Tears are running down his face. He's obviously a distraught and broken kobold. Who are you? What are you doing here? We're... We're here searching for some lost kinsmen of ours. Is this your... Is this your territory? Um, I, 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 I don't know. Y Yustrail would know. I can take you to meet her. Who? Yustrail, our leader. Maybe if you help us, she'll give you safe passage and my, my friends won't hurt you. Who are your friends being the rest of your tribe? Yes, yes. I'm... I'm Meepo. I'm... I am... I, I was the Keeper of Dragons. I think we would like to talk to your leader. May I speak with my companions? Yes. Alright, I'll uh, back up a little bit and uh, mm -hmm. say, well, this, this guy's offering to take us to the leader of the Kobold tribe and suggesting that perhaps we could gain safe passage if we were to help him. What do you guys? What did they mention what they wanted help with? Sounds useful, but uh, where are the dragons? Where are the dragons? Uh, Calcrix was our dragon. The goblins stole it. Wretched, okay. stinking goblins. That they are. That they will, are. Will Will you help us get Calcrix back? Perhaps we could discuss this with with your leader. Yeah. Yes. Of course. Of course. F here. Follow me. Um. Let me just double check to make sure we're not going to go somewhere we shouldn't go. Um. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh. He's a little bit nervous around uh, the rest of the seeing the rest of the party who are fairly heavily armed, but he trusts you and is. Obviously excited about the possibility of somebody helping him get his dragons back, so I'm going to move you guys along as you okay. uh, follow him. He's going to lead you along this passageway. You see many doors and stuff, but he doesn't seem to care about them. And as he goes, he keeps calling out a phrase in Draconic. Uh, Nick, you can understand it's spoken as well as written. Is that correct? Um, I can understand written. Um, draconic if I'm touching the words and I can understand spoken draconic for its literal meaning okay the, the, he's the, what he's saying doesn't really make sense it just seems to be a code phrase he keeps calling out tickle corn in draconic as he walks along and the kobolds that you pass eye you with suspicion but they they don't uh, disturb you tickle corn okay Um, I don't know if we know this, but do kobolds typically speak Draconic? Like, is that their native language? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, he leads you along a double row of relief-carved columns uh, through a long, large hall. The worn carvings depict entwining dragons. There is an elite squad of three kobolds patrolling the hall. They react uh, with suspicion, but with Meepo and the passphrase, they don't uh, they don't attack you. As you reach the end of the corridor, uh, you see a short throne standing near the west wall constructed of fallen bits of masonry stacked against an old altar. On the top of the altar sits a variety of small items. The portion of the altar that serves as the throne's back features a carving of a rearing dragon. A metallic key is held firmly in the dragon's open jaws. Sitting on the throne in front of the... Sitting on the floor in front of the throne is the kobold's leader, Yustrail, along with two more elite kobolds to guard her. She uh, motions you forward as Meepo um, sort of gestures you to go ahead. Oops, not hey, Joe, can you make a quick uh, religion check on the um, altar? Um, yeah, go ahead. You don't recognize anything specific about it. It looks like they just made it as a place for their leader to repose. It's made of... Um, uh, the, the altar is old and worn, and the fragments mostly obscure at the throne that they built in front of it. All right. Um, I'm going to bow deeply without taking eye contact off of the leader, uh, and while keeping my hands open. 
Greetings, who are you? We are... We didn't mean to stumble into your domain. We are merely a, a group of travelers searching, searching for some kinsmen of ours. Uh, who we believe have the been human lost. adventurers? Yes. They went to fight the goblins. We haven't seen them since. This was about a month ago? That's correct. Give me one second. I need to um, pull up this character. Oh, wait, no. I have that here, don't I? Ah, uh, sorry. I'm still getting it. Well, instant. if it's all the same to you... If it's all the same to you, we, we certainly don't mean to intrude on your territory. Perhaps you could see us to uh, where these goblins are? Perhaps. So would you be willing to help uh, uh, recover our dragon? Meepo mentioned this dragon that, like, tall, fire breathing, scary thing that flies. And oh, it's no, it's, it's quite young. Aha. Uh -huh. Uh, and quite dangerous, I assume. No, I mean, Meepo controlled it, and Meepo is one of the smallest and weakest of us. That's over at Meepo. Uh, I, how would you propose that we bring it back to you? I, even a small dragon is... <clears throat> well... I'm sure you have more experience in handling dragons than I do. Perhaps Meepo could come with us and guide us and take the dragon when we subdue the goblins around it. Of course, uh, Meepo, you would you can accompany these adventures, and uh, the goblins captured this dragon, but I'm sure that they also keep it caged. It would uh, consume them if it got loose. Damn it. One second, I'm sorry, I need to find thing. And that sounds useful. She's supposed to... Mm. I swear she was supposed to offer you something, but now I'm not finding... Uh... What did you say her name was, Joe? Yistra. Uh, Yistra? Yes, trail. Yes, drail. Y U S D R A Y L. So, uh, yes, trail. What are the um, what are the goblins plan to do with it? What were you guys going to do with it? But the goblins stole it merely to destroy us. They hate us. They serve the one below. And, uh, who is the one below? The outcast. He grows the fruit which he gives to the goblins. Those dragon-thieving goblins are his servants. Hmm. Um, yeah. Joe? What? Do yeah. you know anything about kobolds? Are they generally, like, troublemakers, or...? Um, they are, uh... You know, they're like, they're like goblins. They serve, um, they tend to serve dragons or dragon cults. Um, they're not a great threat to civilization. They might, you know, attack a, somebody on the road or somebody in their um, uh, camp, but they're not going to go, like, conquer cities. Alright. Um, sorry, what did they say about the one below? The outcast who grows the fruit. The goblins are his servants. Great. <laughs> But you guys don't serve the outcast. The kobolds don't serve no. the outcast. No. God, no. Uh, or uh, dragons, no. Sorry. <laughs> oh, okay. Excellent. And, um, uh, pardon the curious question, but, uh, how do you, how do you treat your dead? Uh, it's an extremely good question. Uh, Hopefully it's not like burning in dragon fire. Oh no, they feed them to the dragon. <laughs> I could see that. I could see that. 
the the poor we cremate those with um, material possessions m sometimes are buried with them in uh, uh, tombs that they purchase in their lives during their lives okay excellent thank you I make a study of such things and wish to treat your culture with respect and we thank you for this safe passage and we'll attempt to get your dragon back from those demon spawn uh, you have my thanks Meepo will accompany you uh, he can show you a uh, cir more circuitous route into the goblin's domain so you won't run into their uh, more well guarded uh, areas excellent it will be good to have a geomancer along Why do you think he's a geomancer? Do you not remember oh, Dota? Right. I forgot. <laughs> right, I totally scrub. forgot. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Okay, um, where is... Sorry, I'm still navigating this map. So, um, do you all have any more questions before Meepo takes you to, uh, to the goblin's lair? Oh, but I can do that. Is there a back passage to the goblin's lair? Maybe not a frontal... Eh, frontal assaults are fine. That's where Meepo will be taking you, yes. Okay. Thank you, Bistro. She uh, bows her head slightly and gestures to uh, Meepo to take you away, and he scampers down the hall and beckons you to follow him. Um, so, whoops. Get off of Meepo. You guys, come this way. Well, I'm glad we didn't decide to fight all the kobolds. <laughs> it would have been a lot of experience. <laughs> Don't we get experience for negotiating with them as well? I feel like we should. You might, you might. We'll see. <laughs> Maybe after you successfully do anything. So, um, Meepo is going to take you... Like persuading them to grant us safe passage? You didn't exactly persuade them mm. they desperately offered it because they really don't want to fight you guys but Excellent. sure i mean if you want us to slaughter them all for xp we can yeah mm. you'll get some experience for not slaughtering them all <laughs> um, so he takes you along a side passage ignore the fact that you might be clipping through some walls it doesn't matter uh he's got a no clip he says back. Is the back entrance yeah Did we pass I, any, uh, oops any... daisy that should be there Okay, we didn't pass any doors. Just wanna... Uh, no. Um, why can't I? Hold on a second. That shouldn't be there. What the hell's going on here? Oh, there we go. That's supposed to be over there. But maybe so three rooms this. of alchemy potions. Well, there was the the pile of gold the size of your head, but you didn't think that was very important. Um. No. <laughs> So Meepo has Where led was that, you to the altar. <laughs> no, no, it wasn't. It wasn't. Um, Meepo has led you to what he says is the back door, and now he's sort of hanging back a little bit, wringing his hands, obviously afraid of the goblins. Fear not, Meepo. We will slice them and dice them like vegetables led to the guacamole. What? What, what is guacamole? <laughs> <laughs> Of course, of course. They're, okay. They they are through this door. This should take you to the to the the back of their domain. They they won't be expecting you. This door, or this door? Yes. Wait, what other door is there? Those Left or rapid. right? Uh, That's not a door. Sorry. Okay, I forgot that you guys can't see when you're dragging. Mm -hmm. Um, you guys came down a passageway. I'm showing Nick. Yeah, I've, I saw it. Yeah. So this is just a uh, sort of a. a, a Tetris shape based uh, shaped uh, passageway that leads to this back entrance. Hey Meepo. Did, yes. Are you, did you bring any weapons? Um. I, I expect we'll do a lot of fighting. No, I have the dragon's leash. What do you mean you don't <laughs> expect we'll do a lot of fighting? Aren't we going to cleave all the goblins in twain? If we have to, I suppose. I thought that was the agreement. I mean, goblins are not great people. I think we're going to have to kill them. Death for the death god. <laughs> Meepo is just going to sort of sit silently and look at you all with fear. <laughs> I'd be afraid of us, too. We'll be okay. 
Oh no, rats will brawl with too much for all of us. Don't forget to be the problem. <laughs> Was that was that somebody throwing shade at my rat killing skills? Huh? Well, rats did almost kill you. I mean, you know. I got better. Yeah, yes, you did. No thanks to you. Thanks, Glum. Um. Let's see, actually, guys, can we take a just a real short, like, five minute break here? I need to try to fix something here, and uh. That's fine. Yeah. That's fine. Okay, I will be back in like five minutes.
Hello? Hey. Hey. Okay. What is up? Okay, we're just waiting for job.
I call that? Um, is everybody there? Mm-hmm. No. Yep. Yep. No, nope, Nick's not there. Okay, great. Um, okay, so um, do you guys want to do anything or make, ask any questions before you open the door and proceed to the goblin's lair? Um, Meepo, have you been into their lair before? No, no, never. All right, well. Do you know who their leader is? <clears throat> they, there's a very big, strong goblin who leads them. Um, they had a smaller goblin who used to lead them, but the big goblin took over. You know his name? No, no, I don't. <clears throat> Wait a minute, I should have... Why don't... Oh, here we go. Uh, does anybody else want to ask Meepo anything or do anything before we proceed? Nope. nope. Okay. Um, can I just take a minute to refresh my uh, Comprehend Languages? Yeah. I mean, technically, I guess you need to ask the party, but That's I'm sure that they I'm wouldn't saying. mind. Of course. <laughs> well, while he does that, I refresh my glowing mate. So the door in front of you is a simple wooden door, which Meepo says is unlocked. Okay. I'm not going first. All right, I'll go first again. Gross. Everyone's good. I will open the door. All right. Do it. You open the door and you see no, no, nothing. Cool. This empty chamber is home only to rat droppings, crumpled flagstones, and stain. Alright, I guess I move to the next door. When everyone's in here, I will uh, open up the next one as well. Okay, nobody's making any checks or anything, we're just going ahead forward? Mm -hmm. Alright, um... um uh, Zach, is he coming, or is he just... Okay. I'm... Meepo, are you coming? Oh, yes, sorry. I forgot that I have to move Meepo. Meepo is going... Oops. Oh, it's annoying. I have to go back and forth. You could give them to me if you want. Can I do that? I think so. Uh, Just give me control of the token. Oh, yeah. So I go to... Advance... Control will buy... Why can't I change that? Yeah, it doesn't let me change the controllable buy. It's weird. Yeah. It's not Whatever. A, like a searchable list where you can just search and add me. No, not as far as I can see. Like if I do that to you, actually, no, now I can't see that on anybody. Well, that's weird. All right, we can figure it out later. Yeah. All right. So yeah, he's just going to to follow behind and sort of stay in the rear of the party. Um. As you open the room to the next room, or sorry, as you open the door to the next room, you see dust and odd bits of stony debris and rubble scattered on the floor. An ornate fountain is built into the eastern wall, though cracked and stained, the fountain's overarching carving of a dra diving dragon retains its beauty. A relief carved stone door stands on the western wall. You have, um, you have our passive perceptions, right? I do. Okay. Uh, everybody sucks. Go I, think, I think you three of you have a twelve and uh Nick has a ten. Or Collins has a ten. Okay. <laughs> so none of you are below Why? average, but none of you are very good. You're unlikely to basically you're extremely unlikely to see anything without or unless it's like just straight up a goblin in the room with you. Great. <laughs> Subscribe. 
Um, Alright, I'm gonna make a uh, perception check for traps in the next room. Um, or not. I don't know. Am I allowed to? Yeah, yeah, I'm just trying to see if you find anything. Sorry, you're, you're searching the room with the fountain in it? Yeah. Do I need to step into it first? Uh, no, you know, you can you can do. I mean, you're going to be in the room. Um, the only thing you notice is um, uh, on the fountain you see an inscription in Draconic on the font. Oh. Uh, well, I let my good friend Jurandros know about that. Thank you. I'll step up and trace my hand over it. It says in Draconic, "Let there be fire." I don't know any fire spells. Who's holding the torch? Uh, last time, I, I think I was the one that lit the torch. Um, can I investigate the statue, see if I can find a spot either to stick a torch or that might be able to be filled with oil and lit on fire or anything like that? <clears throat> Um, the fountain seems pretty worn, but you can see that the spout where liquid would come out is still uh, its unplugged and looks like something could come out of it. So something can come out of it or go into it? Probably come out. It's a fountain. So this is a drag... It, it's supposed... When it was in operation, it would look like a diving dragon, like diving into a pool with liquid mm -hmm. coming out of its mouth. And you can see that the mouth of the dragon... That's unblocked. It, it it could still, in theory, operate. Okay. Can I look around and see if there's any way to activate it? Anything like that? Or anywhere that liquid can be placed um, that might circle around there? Make a history check. Not investigation? No, history. Um... You, you recall that uh, uh, dragons and dragon cults uh, re revere the power of spoken draconic as a power source of its own. Um. Alright, so uh, I think speaking draconic might activate the fountain. Maybe speaking fire or something like that. But nobody here knows Draconic, do they? No, but, um, no, yeah, I don't. And I haven't heard this phrase, so I doubt I could repeat it back. Even so what exactly does the inscription say? Uh, it says... Fire. Meepo, can you speak the word fire in the Tongue of Dragons? Um, he says fire, but n nothing seems to happen. You do sense a trembling of magic from the fountain, but nothing happens. Maybe if he said, let there be fire. Yeah. Um, Meepo will walk over to the fountain, and he will say the phrase in Draconic, let there be fire. The reddish liquid begins to well from the diving dragon's mouth and accumulates in the basin. It fills the basin about enough liquid to fill a single potion bottle, and then stops. Um, it's not hot or anything. Right? No. Can I identify it by tasting it? Uh, yeah. Um, mm, make a Constitution check. Okay. Oh, whoops. You take two fire damage, and you're pretty sure that this is a potion of fire breath. Potion of fire breath? Huh. Uh, <clears throat> so, like, what, you drink this potion and you can breathe fire? Let me see, actually. Do I have a handout for that? I should, shouldn't I? You may very well. Yeah. Um, wait, there. Now do you see it? Potion of Fire Breath? That's the one, yes. Uh, 
Ah, well, if I had a way to bottle this, it could come in handy. Aren't, aren't you an alchemist? Oh, oh, Meepo, Meepo has something. Meepo runs back to his lair. Well, I'm an alchemist, but I didn't bring my, uh, all of my equipment along with me. You, you didn't bring a, sing, a single time. bottle? <laughs> what, what sort of alchemist? Oh, come on. <laughs> come on, Glom. You need, spy. you need to step, step up your game. <laughs> oh, this isn't Glom. This is you, 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 Andros. You, Andros. I'm sorry. Uh, Meepo <laughs> comes back very pleased with himself with a small glass vial with a, a crude stopper. Thank you, Meepo. Well done. I'll uh, carefully scoop this in since apparently it burns you when you consume it. Uh. I'm gonna use my scythe to slice off a piece of the rat off my pack and hand it to Meepo. <laughs> <laughs> Meepo sort of looks at you with some suspicion, but he thanks you, and uh, puts the puts the, puts the piece of rat in his pouch. Excellent. <laughs> it's good eating on them rats. Um, also, Paul, did you did you you just did a general check of the whole room, right? Yeah. I'm sorry, I forgot one other thing. Um, on the western door, you saw there are uh, carvings of skeletal dragons and another draconic inscription. I just realized that I saw another draconic inscription, but I got distracted by this dragon statue. Uh, ah. Andros, on the door over there, it looks like a little draconic as well. Okay, I'll go and uh, take a look at that. Um, um. Um, so you're going to read it with your spell? Yeah, I've traced my hands over it. It says, <clears throat> excuse me, Rebuke the dead, open the way. Rebuke the dead, open the way. That seems foreboding. Yeah, sounds like it's going to summon skeletons or something. Um, Meepo, I should, Meepo. like, have a Rebuke the Dead spell, right? I'm a fucking paladin. Um, uh, I believe that you get Turn Undead, but I don't know at what level. Yeah, I don't, uh, I don't have it yet, but... Four, I think. Hey, Meepo. Can I ask you... Um... <laughs> do you... Did your people write these... These draconic inscriptions? No, no, this... This is much older than us. Thank you. Um. Okay, what do we want to do, guys? Should we go through this door, or...? Maybe just ex oh, we were gonna keep to the right. So, is was this an inscription on top of the door? Um, let's see. It is on the door itself. And which door is this? Oh, the door over here. No, it's it's this one here. I'm sure, you can see that. But okay, and it's the says one that they're next rebuke to. the dead and rebuke open the dead. The way. Open the way. Yeah. Um, I'm going to, and I don't expect this to do anything, but I'm going to uh, grasp my holy symbol from around my neck and hold it up and give a uh, short prayer of cursing the dead and laying them to rest forever. May they never move again, and may their bones rot, and the undead be smited with Kelvamore's deathly gaze. <laughs> um, there is a, a faint blue glow around the door and it opens very slightly. Well, shit. <laughs> nice. Uh, I guess I will peek inside the door. 
Um, all right, I will open it for you. Uh, shit, why can't I grab this? Paladins um, are good for something. <laughs> She's basically just a rogue. I'm up with all my doors for us. <laughs> good job, Paladin. Um, okay. Um, <clears throat> in this room, you see five dusty sarcophagi, three to the north and two to the south. Each of the carved stone coffins resembles a noble, elf-like humanoid in ceremonial robes. An altar with images of dragons carved into black obsidian is set in the center of the western wall. A single candle burns brightly on the altar. Next to the candle are a small whistle and a crystal flask. Um, I'd like to... Um... I don't suppose I could make an Arcana check. <laughs> Checking for what exactly? For the the vibes this thing is giving off. Uh yeah, go ahead. <laughs> there is something evil in this room. The altar itself is benign, but you are getting extremely unpleasant vibes from the room itself. This room is. Uh, I don't know, guys. I don't like it. Uh, I'm going to use my action to open my awareness to detect evil. Celestials or fiends or undeads. Um. So that is blocked by total cover. Uh, and something else, right? Isn't like lead or whatever? Or is anything something else? Uh, no. It you says detect magic. you know the location of any celestial thing that is oh, not yeah, behind is total cover. Damn. Um, so you can't detect any particular undead, mm -hmm. but once you open your senses, this room absolutely reeks of death. Death or undeath? Uh, there is a noxious odor. So it's it's undeath. Divine sense, okay. you, you'd only sense undeath. Okay. Um, yeah. So the room itself is physically clean, but, but to your divine sense, it is befouled in some way. We need to purge this room. Um, who wants to join me? I figure we open these one by one and maybe burn the contents to make sure that they're dead and won't stab us in the back. That sounds good to me. Uh yeah, I'll, I'll uh, kind of guard. I'll guard the door. <laughs> you. Meepo is going to lurk <laughs> back behind. Who's guarding the door? Uh, Eudemos. You Andros. You Andros. You you do that, you Andros. <laughs> um, I'm going to first investigate the altar, um, and I don't know if that's a religion perception. check. A perception. Okay. Not investigation. Oops. Oh, it depends on what you're looking for, I guess. Um, I mean, honestly... So, like, you know, looking for traps or hidden compartments, that's perception. Trying to identify the deity that this altar was built for, that's religion, you know, things like that. Yeah, I'm more interested in, like, the deity and stuff, even though I don't have a bonus to that. Shit. <laughs> so you have no knowledge of what deity this could be to, or, you know, an altar towards, mm -hmm. but it does look like it's probably some kind of dragon cult. It's made of obsidian and covered with dragons, so. I don't particularly have... Do have... Sorry, say that again? You said there was a crystal flask? There is a, uh, a crystal flask and a small whistle on the altar next to a single candle that has been burning since you entered the room. Is and as far as you can tell, it was flask? burning before that. Yes, there is a there's a liquid inside it. Can we tell what it is? Like vaguely or not from a distance, it's probably a potion of some kind, but you don't know. It's probably not water, it's a crystal flask. It's a nice flask on an altar in a room full of evil spirits. It's probably not just water. But you you don't know what it is. Can I go up and investigate investigate, see if I can figure it out? Um, are you going to just like look at it, or are you going to try to like shake it, taste it? What are you trying to do? I wouldn't touch it yet, William. Not until we've cleansed this room.
Yeah, I, I think we might, we might want to cleanse it first. So there's a light burning on the altar. A candle. Candle. Hmm. Hmm. The candle does not appear to be uh, going down at all. It's just emitting a bright light continuously. Candles and light generally aren't associated with the undead, so I think we'll leave that alone and start opening the sarcophagi if nobody uh, really objects. Really quickly, though, uh, Ben, you can't read Dwarvish, right? Yeah, I can. You can. Um, you can read something on the uh, whistle, um, but you're not sure what it is um, from a distance. I'm right up next to it. Can I see? Okay, if you look closer, the whistle is made of crystal, and it has the name Nightcrawler inscribed on it in Dwarvish. Does a that doesn't trigger any bells historically or anything like that for me? No, not particularly. Right. It's certainly not a great relic. It's if it's a magical item, it's probably a minor one. Anyone uh, know anything about a night crawler? It's written here in Dwarvish on this whistle. Caller, not crawler. Night caller. It's yeah. written here in Dwarvish on this whistle. Night caller. It might be the name of the item. Perhaps this item snuffs out light. Hmm. Alright, well, like you said, we should probably leave it uh, until after the undead are dealt with. Okay. Let's start with this one. Go ahead, Zach. So I'm going to use my crowbar and pry up the lid of the sarcophagi and, and I've got my open, torch in my other hand as you pry open the lid a skeletal hand darts out grabs the lid and throws it off the sarcophagus this happens okay. to all the coffins and that one should be on the token layer please and five skeletons emerge roll for initiative can I as a readied reaction just thrust my torch into the one next to me because I have yes, it in my hand yes make an attack roll Okay. Oh, I'm sorry, guys. Hold on. I need to bring this up. Where did that work? No, I need to get rid of this. Hold on. I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We should all just re-roll. Ignore all that. Yes. Go ahead and re-roll. Re <laughs> um. So select your token and then roll. Correct. Correct. Oh yeah, that works better. Uh, and then I need to do this, and then say this. Is that an improvised attack or something? Um, just make a make a, a melee attack. It does I don't know how. So to... just just roll a d20 plus your yeah d20. Yes, greater than twenty. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah. Um, let me check. Uh, give me just one moment. I'm sorry. I'm kind of improvising this. <laughs> uh, where'd you go, skeleton? The uh, the Torch skeleton. Torch actually huh? has an attack value. Um, it it's one fire damage. Um, yeah, but he's he specifically stabbed it into the thing to try to ignite it, um, and it's going to work. Uh, okay. The the goblin is, or sorry, the goblin. The skeleton is immediately uh, engulfed in flame, and uh, is spending a turn trying to bat out the flames and rip off the fragments of its clothing that are engulfing it. And uh, it is now Euandros's turn. Oh boy. <clears throat> um, well, there's one with a clear path to me. Uh, so I'm going to whip out my sling and, uh, sling at it. Are they wearing, are they wearing any kind of armor or anything? Or? Scraps of armor, little, you know, fragments of, of chain and, and studded uh, leather. Excellent. Okay, great. Alright, um, that's it for me. Alright, Glomdil, it is your turn. So why am I before Ben with a 19 he's got 21? Oh crap, I didn't do this. Sorry, Ben, it's your turn. Alright. 
um, before I go, I have a question. How yeah. does dual wielding work? How do you mean? You My make... person started with two short swords. How do you... Right. Fight? So I think that it's actually correctly on your sheet, but basically what you do is you make two attacks. Uh, so you have a main melee and an off melee. The off melee is your bonus action. So you can't use another bonus action. Um, you only get one bonus action per turn, but you can use that bonus action to make a second attack. Which oh, does less damage. Yeah, it doesn't have the um, bonus... Um, ability modifier, yeah. Yeah, okay. Making sure. In that case, what I'm going to do is I would like to... Can I shift one space to the right before I uh, attack? Uh, right if here? you leave the... Oh, uh, yeah, if, you, if you're going to use your whole move to do that, then yes, you can, you can disengage from that skeleton. Yeah, I just want to move here so I have pull up my back instead of potentially other skeletons. Mm -hmm. um, and then I want to pull out my two short swords and attack this uh, one skeleton with both of them. Okay, go ahead. There we go. You uh, strike deeply into its shoulder with one, and one of its arms actually falls off. The other takes a chip out of its rib. It's not down, but it's really looking pretty rough for wear. And it is Glomdil's turn. Um, I'm going to move here and strike the one in front of me. I'm all going to hit the <laughs> ones. Dang it, Paul. What? So you're going to hit the one in the middle? Oh, yeah, I'm going to hit the one in the middle. Okay. Well, shit. Uh, you actually have advantage because he's climbing out of oh. the um, thing. Awesome. I smack nice. him in the face. Uh, you, uh, you're you using a maul. Yeah. You actually bring it down on his head as he tries to climb out, shatters his skull entirely, and the sarcophagus Sweet. slams shut, cutting the rest of him in half. Fantastic flow. Yeah, he is he is slain outright. The dead should stay in the ground. Okay. Oh, um, I'm sorry, uh, uh, Rudig, you have inspiration, by the way. I forgot to mention that. Oh, sweet. Why? Um, for role play. It's your turn. Oh, thank you. Uh, can I? Now, let's see. Um, bu -bu 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 -bum, so that one's dead. I'm going to cheer on Glo wait, Glom? Glom. Glom for having the right attitude. And let's see, I've got my crowbar, I've got my great scythe. I'm just going to use my great scythe to actually is the um is the one in front of me still on fire? Uh yes, he is he is trying to he's tearing off the last fragments of burning clothing because the bones aren't really burning, but they're scorched. I see. Yeah, I'm going to use my great scythe to attack him. Okay. Uh, uh, you you're going that uh, the great scythe goes directly through his rib cage and his head rolls across the floor. Excellent. He's also slain. Slainy slain slain. It is now the skeleton's turn. The one next to uh, William Makes a sh uh, draws his short sword with his remaining arm and makes an attack. And he hits. He does six damage. The other two focus their attacks on Paul, um, but they are not coordinating well, so they don't have a flanking advantage against you. So I think only one of those hits, correct? No, attackers win. Ties both hit. A twenty, a sixteen. You don't have, you don't have uh, sixteen. I have sixteen. Okay, you take eleven damage. Sure. Still on your feet. Technically, Wait. yes. What? I have one hit point left, but you know. It is Uandros's turn. Actually, uh, can we can we double check that AC thing? Because I'm that uh, attacker wins or defender uh, loses ties. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's a, it's a target number. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Um, give me one sec. Don't I have a sheet for you, buddy? Can you give me a sheet for this guy? That's amazing. The concepts of armor class and hit points originated in a set of rules for a naval battle game set during oh set during the American Civil War. I thought it was going to be written during the American Civil War. Um, amazing. <laughs> that would be amazing. Um, Meepo is going to uh, uh, throw a rock through the door. Um, I don't have a roll for him, so I'm just going to use these guys' attack. But it doesn't do that much damage. It does. He does two damage to this one. Oh shit! Got to get better at this. Come on, that way. Okay. No, not negative twelve health. The skeleton has negative twelve health. Okay. Now it's Yandris' turn. Okay. So there's two attacking Paul and one very badly wounded one near me. Correct. Uh, all right. <clears throat> um, Meepo took a chip out of the the northern one attacking Paul, but it's it didn't seem to care too much. Okay, I'm going to um, run up and uh, try and <laughs> reach out and shock the skeleton closest to me. Uh, the skeleton is electrocuted and sort of arches his back as he as the electricity courses across his body. Yeah, it's not nice. dead. It did two damage, so no, it's not dead. Yeah. Okay, well, I'm gonna run back to the door. Okay. And it is now William's turn. Ben? Sorry, I keep forgetting I have to push to talk on. Um, oh, yes. I make the off melee attack to try to kill the skeleton first. Alright. It is dead. Okay, look at the Alright. Um, with that, I say, Grumble, back up and heal. Then I step forward to engage uh, the skeleton next to oh, Hold on, let me. This guy's dead. Come on. There we go. He's dead. All right, and you are making the main attack against the one in front of you. Yes. Okay. Well struck. Uh, that blow strikes deeply, but uh, he's not dead yet. All right. It is now Glomdale's turn. Sorry, I'm thinking, Joe. Okay. Um, as one thing you can do, Paul, you can uh, use your action to focus on defense, which gives you advantage, or gives an enemy attacking you disadvantage. That takes up your action, but it would be a way to protect yourself. You could also use your action to disengage and let Zach take your place. Is it the action to disengage? I can't use like a Correct. movement to like shift the space away. Nope. That doesn't work in this one. No. The idea is you actually. Instead of attacking, you are parrying their attacks against you as you as you, dis as you get away from them, so that then you can move freely.
Hey, Paul, can you make a perception check for me? Yeah. Okay. 12. Okay. Uh, I think I'm just going to hit this guy. This guy sucks. I'm just going to kill him. So I'm going to hit this one. Okay. Smack him in the face. He explodes into fragments. The uh, right. the mall seems particularly effective against them. Their bones are brittle and easily and sh smashed. I am going to use my War Priest passive and make a second attack as a bonus action against the second guy. Nice. Nice. Okay. Go, War Priest. Yeah, he is also completely obliterated. Sweet. Amazing. Badass. You can all have a hundred experience. I'll struck one. Thank you. Um, Joe, I have a question about um, medicine. Can I get back health with medicine, or is that like just to bind wounds, basically? Um, you can use it to stabilize people. If you have uh, a healer's kit, I believe you can... There is some use for healing, but in, the short answer is no. However, you could take a short rest and spend hit dice. Um, and I think some of you might get spells back on rest. Okay. After Glomdil smashes that down, I'm going to run over and bear hug him and just be like, Strike down the dead. May their bones I break go. and lie forever. I go, Thanks, man, but ow. <laughs> yeah, he's he's fairly close to not doing so well. Yeah. Wait, what are hit dice? So, um, your hit die is uh, a measure of, like, your, your the well of your, like... Uh, stamina and, and and whatnot, so you can spend them when heal when resting to heal. You okay. have a hit die based on your class, so you have a d10. Uh, if you go to your character sheet, if you're taking a short rest, if you go to your character sheet and roll the hit die, um, it will automatically uh, roll, add your constitution, and tell you how much health you restore. And you restore all your hit dice, or half your hit dice rounded up on a long rest. And we have how many hit dice do you get? One per level. One. And that will refresh on a long rest? Correct. All your hit dice and all your health will refresh on a long rest. Okay. So okay. do you need to write 1d10 in the hit dice section? For if you have a no. no, no, no. You have a hit die. It knows what the hit die is because you are a wizard or a fighter or a cleric. It knows what hit all die right. that gives you. So like if Nick wanted to heal, he would hit this. And that would automatically roll his hit die, add his charisma, and tell him how much health he restores. Um, after killing the skeletons, the room falls silent, and uh, I don't think you still have your senses extended for the undead, do you, uh, Rudik? Do I have what? Are you still... Your, is your divine sense still active? I don't remember how long that lasts. Until the end of your next turn. Yeah, okay, so you, your, uh, your sense is gone, but the room feels cleaner. Uh, and there's no there's no sound. I also would have sensed anything with it. Yeah, that would have been under total cover because it would have been outside there. Yeah, exactly. Okay. They were inside the sarcophagi. What I'm I was wondering if I would sense anything outside the room, but obviously not because it would be behind no. the walls. Um, excellent. So the room is at peace. Is the candle still lit? The candle is still burning. Okay, I'm fine with that. Um, after spending a minute to find my sling bullet. Um, I'd like to go up and kind of examine the the candle and the things on the altar. Okay, so there is a flask there. Um, mm -hmm. uh, with some examination, you think that it is a potion of resistance. Uh, the whistle is made of crystal and, as I said, has the name Nightcaller inscribed on it. You're not sure what it is, but you could probably find out if you took some time with it. Okay. Does anybody mind if I take these to examine? I don't mind. That's fine. Okay, where do I... Uh, so this... There's that. And... Um... Can you make an Arcana check for me, Nick? Actually, Arcana or History, whichever is higher. Can you use character names? 
sorry, sorry, uh, Yandros. Okay. <laughs> um, the the uh, the whistle it, it it seems familiar to you, but you you can't place it at this time. You'll have to think about it more. And the candle. Um, the, uh, make another uh, arc check. It appears to be a normal candle with a continual flame spell cast on it. Of course, of course. All right. Would it be interrupted if we took it? No. A continue an item uh, with continual flame on it will burn basically forever unless you manually extinguish it or um, uh, dispel magic. It just burns forever. Hey, Meepo, want to carry a flame for us? He sort of I pokes mean, his head in the door. Yes, yes? Would you be willing to carry some light for us? Oh, oh, no. of, of course. Will, will, will it help us find the dragon? Yeah, it'll help us not stub our toes in the dark. Okay. Um, I have a lamp. Is it possible for me to stick the candle in the lamp? Uh, yes, you could do that. Can I do that and then hand that to Meepo? Yeah. Alright. Meepo is now an extremely good light source. <laughs> he's uh, entranced by this this contraption that you've given him. He's he's extremely taken with it. Um. So, Nick, did you want to do something with the dead bodies here? Like put them back in their coffins, or I'm trying to think like. After you kill undead, can they be raised again? I don't recall offhand, Nick or uh, Collins. Um, I feel like they can't. I would assume not, simply because of how damaged they are, right? Well, these ones certainly can't. I mean, most of them are pulverized or chopped into pieces. You guys wrecked them pretty good. I think, uh, like, as long as they're in intact condition, I think they can still be raised again. Yeah, but these are very unintact. <laughs> Extremely. Yeah, I'm, they're not, not intact. I think once something becomes undead, I just think it should be obliterated. Like, it's it's lost any right to a, a decent burial. Well, I mean, that's, that is your, your call. The bones are pretty old. You might be able to burn them. Oh yeah, if they're burnable, definitely. I'll toss them all into the original sarcophagus where the torch was and start a fire there. Okay. The uh, the scraps of armor and, and they, they had some long bows and arrows give enough fuel that it's soon burning merrily and the bones are charred almost to ash. Most of them break into pieces or crumble away as they were extremely ancient already. Sweet. Um, uh, Collins, did you do a, a perception check on the altar? I forget. I did an arcana check. Not can you do... Check. Can you give me one perception check real quick? Sure. Okay. All right. Um, while the people are hauling the bodies into the sarcophagus, I ask you, Andre, I go to you, Andre, no, a, uh, would you mind terribly if I quickly drew a sketch for myself with that whistle? It, sorry, if you drew a sketch of yourself with that whistle? A sketch for myself of that whistle. Oh, no, not at all. Alright, so while they're doing that, I pull out a piece of parchment with my pens and a bottle of ink, and I sketch, and I quickly, and I try to sketch the whistle as well as I can. In That's it. Okay. Thank Glomdil, you very much. Glomdil, do you need to rest? Yeah, I'm probably going to have to ask us to rest, so we might actually want to rest in here uh, for like five minutes. Unless you guys want to just pace out there for a bit, but I, I definitely need to. A short, a short rest, rest is, is Oh. Um, you uh, I thought less. it was five minutes in uh, D4. Now yeah. It's an hour. It's uh, hour. Maybe we should just pull back to Kobold territory. If you guys don't mind, I would like that. I don't object. That would be fun. Is that a good break point? Uh, up to you guys. Um, I don't know what your all schedules are like. Uh, I can go more, but it's it's up to you guys. 
Yeah, let's let's uh, let's keep it going. We can just take a quick. We can take a short break. Those, I mean, effectively take no time because you just roll your hit dice and say that an hour has passed. Yeah, I'm not gonna. I'm well. I'm gonna spend the hour examining the whistle and trying to identify it. Do we? We don't get hit dice back until a long rest, right? Right. Okay, so I'll just save mine. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna save mine. Wait a minute, how do I? Isn't there a way to? Oh wait. Here we go. Uh, you should be able to see the details on that whistle, Nick. I cannot. Check your your journal. From a gameplay point, I can't. Okay. Um, I'm going to use my hit die as well to heal up while we rest. Okay, so just go ahead and hit that hit dice thing, and then uh, adjust your hit points accordingly. Um. So Paul, you should be at twelve now. Yes, I'm back up to twelve. Hey, hey, Zach. I don't know how you, what you think about this. Um. Turns out this whistle, if blown in darkness, can uh, cast the animate dead spell. What? Anything within ten feet. Did you say that out loud? Yeah, I'm, I'm telling you. I grab it from you. I'm going uh, to immediately a, destroy a, this. Make a strength check? <laughs> uh. And uh, Nick, or Colin. Is it too late to well? use inspiration on that? <laughs> no, it's you fine. You, you succeed. You, you grab it from him, whether he wills or nay. <laughs> and I will uh, wait, Zach. crush it in my fist. Uh, make another strength check. It is not crushed by your fist. Okay, I'm going to... It's, it's a magical crystal. <laughs> it's, I'm not saying it's indestructible, I'm just saying that's not a very good roll. Yeah, no, that's fine. I'm trying to think about... Um, where are we? Uh, currently you've retreated to the corridor. Um, okay. Uh, Global territory. Yeah, so cobalt territory. I, I tell you, your Andreas, I'm like, look, I'm, clearly this is uh, like, this is a bad uh, item. Right. We should get rid of it. <laughs> I'm not. I'm this not, this I'm is an evil, thing. and but, in this is a chaotic spell. It is seething so, with heresy and demonic power. I will kill this. I will destroy this evil artifact. And I'm going to put it on the ground and crush it under my boot. I'm going to take my scythe and smash my scythe on it. Oh. I'm going to get my crowbar make, make, out make, and make, just make, begin beating down. it. <laughs> like, wait, wait. Before you get to take an action, Nick or Collins gets to take one. Go so ahead. Go ahead. Couldn't, couldn't we, couldn't we just sell it to, no. a, uh, mm. to a holy shrine for protection or proper distraction? Yeah, it seems kind of sketchy to me to destroy any sort of evil artifact this close to a group like the Kobolds. There's no telling what will happen when the ma what might happen over time if the magic is released here. I don't think that's how magic artifacts work. Do you know that's how magic artifacts work, work Paladin? I know that anything yeah. that reanimates undead should be destroyed. After we destroy it, we can pick up the bits and bring it to a holy shrine. Destroyed, okay. but destroyed <laughs> safely by professionals. I am yeah, a professional. Okay, Rudik, if you're not if you're not convinced <laughs> at this point, you can make another roll to try to destroy it. You're you're holding it, so. Okay, you you shatter it. It's destroyed. Well, no point now, I guess. <laughs> uh, I'm just going to shake my head. We have cleansed the earth of an evil thing this day. Thank you. And I'm going to pick up the bits, and I'm going to take a small box out of my pack and put the bits inside them and safely uh, put it away. And I'll say, yes, we will take this to a holy shrine, and they will dispose of it and prevent this evil from being released into the world again or polluting the minds of innocent civilians. Uh, Collins, you can have inspiration as well. Um, but, yeah, it's gone. It's, it's shattered. Fuck that shit. <laughs> I'm not sure how much a wondrous item would sell for, but I do feel like that was a pretty valuable item. Extremely evil, but pretty valuable. 
tasting size gently when uh, <laughs> Zach is too far away to hear him. I see. Epo is just cowering in the corner, w- watching you through like clenched fists, hoping that you'll stop fighting. <laughs> why are mommy and daddy fighting? More like why are the big scary people with weapons and magic fighting when I'm a two foot tall kobold? Oh god. <laughs> uh, don't worry about it, Epo. Yeah. Some people people just don't know an opportunity when they see it. (laughs) Opportunity. For death. Alright, I'm officially changing uh, Nick Collins' name to Isildur. Um, (laughs) Oh gosh. (laughs) It's fine! (laughs) I claim it as a weird guild for my brother. (laughs) Oh my gosh, it's... (laughs) Good fucking book. Okay. So you take you guys have taken your rest and uh, you are ready to proceed again, I think. Yeah. Yeah. So you can now move freely. Oops, a daisy on the wrong layer. No. Oh, I can delete these skeletons so they're not here anymore. By the way, unless you specify otherwise, I'm not going to be closing doors behind you. Seems fair. I don't think we need you if, as long as we no. you should kill need everything you. behind us. Sorry, Ben, you moved right on top of me, Paul. <laughs> Not Sorry. quite sure where we're going. Maybe up here? Um, you, you, yeah, your okay. com- comrades went through the, uh, the doorway north of you. Yeah. Through the light ahead of you, the light cast by Meepo's um, wonderful lantern, you can see that the passageway uh, opens a little bit on the right and left, and then goes along a little further towards six cells, which all seem to be very slightly open. And the area stinks a little bit. It's not totally rancid, there's kind of a musty smell. Let's check down the cross corridors. Uh, one of them seems to be a dead end, unless it's like filled with brown maggots. Uh, yes, that's just a that's a uh, an empty an empty cell. Really quick. Um, uh, Ben, can you make a perception check for me? Shit, you know one moment. Shit, yeah. Not the good type of shit. You should be good at perception. Oh, wow. Okay, so um, as you start to walk along this corridor, you see that there are tracks on the dust here. Some are made by rats, and some by humanoids. The rat tracks are recent, as recent as a few minutes old, and the humanoid tracks are almost a month old, made by four human-sized individuals moving across the area heading north, and three of those individuals returned south. Hey, guys, humans came through here about a month. Some humans came through here about a month ago. Some rats a couple minutes ago. Good, we're on the right track. We'll find their bodies yet. Also, is that our first crit? Uh, yeah, I think so. Nice. <laughs> Yay! Good job, Will. Congratulations. Um. I'd like, guys, what do you think? I'd like to sneak up and see if we can, I can, uh, kind of clear these cells before we trot up and get surprised from each side. That's a good All idea. Right. Leave nothing not behind us. Sneaking, but, uh... Ooh, okay, well... Wait, what are we, what, are, what, where are we, where are we sneaking? I'm just, I'm just sneaking up ahead to check out the cells. Oh, okay. And make sure they're empty. Um, wait, wait, stop moving for a second, hold on. Okay. Uh, so the first cell that you look into on your right there, um, is empty. Uh, there is, um, what looks like a giant rat's nest, but it's been abandoned. Um, are you carrying a light? Um, nope. Okay, make a perception check for me. Okay. 
Uh, you hear something from the cells ahead of you. Faint, but sort of a scratching sound. From the cells okay. to the north of you. Alright, let me uh, just uh, check this one over here. Also empty. Another empty, uh, or it's got a rat's nest, but nothing else. Okay, I'll sneak back. Um, guys, it sounds like there might be rats ahead. It's abandoned rat's nest, and I heard some chittering. Hmm. Hmm. I'm sure we can clear them out. I just uh, I don't want to be in front. <laughs> oh, okay. Right, well, me, me and Zach will go in front. Yep. So we'll move on up. Come on, Meepo. Meepo will come up behind, still being a little careful. Um, as Meepo's light shines more brightly down the corridor the sounds increase and suddenly rats jump out of all three of those cells hissing and charging at you oops daisy now i need to do this and then i need to clear you guys go away go can away, i get a away. free dinner you, you do not get a free come on, dinner come on. winner winner rat for dinner no. <laughs> Just no. Come on. We've got dwarves here. Dwarves eat rat on a stick. I, I think you're thinking of Cratchit? <laughs> I I think dwarves here still would eat rat on a stick. They're dwarves. I, it's, I think that you should roll initiative, Zach. <laughs> That's probably true. Before the rats get a surprise round on you. Yeah. Wait. Alright. I got the 22, not the 5. Because I get advantage. Oh, okay. That confused the system. Yeah, sorry. Next time I'll use the initiative from my um, sheet. So it'll just do the two. Okay. Um, Alright, so it is Euandros' turn. Okay. Um, got my sling in hand, so I'm going to sling the closest one. The, the stone strikes true, but the rat is not slain. Um, Hola. I'm done. Okay. Hastings. Uh, give me just I attack the same just like ten seconds, one second. Advantage. Hello? Uh, that just got attacked by dark voids, and I was... Hello? Like, Joe's Joe okay. dealing with cold eyes. Ah, cool. And I was fine for Lord. Uh, this was earlier. I was fine for Lord. Alright, guys. Um, uh, so, William, you said you were going... Yes, I'm attacking with my longbow, uh, with advantage, because the rat hasn't... Because they haven't moved yet, yet. yep. Uh, which one are you shooting at? The one that's already been attacked. Uh, your arrow goes directly through its eye socket and it drops dead. 
Are you going to do anything else? No, that's it for my turn. Okay. Zach, your turn. I am going to rush up. Do, do, do. And slicey this one with guess what? The We're great fast. scythe of great slicing. Uh, you uh, also kill this rat. It's your scythe goes into its skull and it twitches for a little while on the end of your weapon before it goes still. Mmm, dinner. Winner, winner, rat for dinner. It is now the rat's turn. Uh, please. Glomdo, your turn. Should I miss that where to go? He fled up the corridor and around, or up the corridor and around through this room. You can't see anymore. You're not quite sure where he went. But like up here somewhere. Yes, that was the direction he fled. Past the cells and up. <laughs> Alright, well I moved that far, that's all I can do. Okay, so directly in front of you, um, you see is a pit trap. It's jammed open so that it won't rearm itself like the one outside did. Um, it looks like it was jammed open by uh, another adventuring party. They, they used uh, pitons to, to keep it open. And there's a 20-foot deep pit containing rat bones, rusted metal bits, and filth. I just, you know, make a quick note of that to the party and end my turn. And the room stinks. Great. It, does this look like another one of those fountains? Um, it's a it's a similar fountain. It's a dry fountain with an overarching diving dragon. All right. Well, shall we uh, see what's in this room? Yeah. So with the uh, were the cells combat. all empty? Uh, they just um, contained. Uh, uh, the, the other ones, the ones that the rats came out of, had rats' nests that were not abandoned. It uh, looked like they're more stable. You can't stand there, by the way, Ben, that's a pit. You can pass it by sort of jumping the corner. Um, oh, I'm sorry, you can't see this, I forgot. Can you show uh, us? Yeah, I apologize. I forgot that you guys can't see this. Thing. So, this is a trap. Do you see that shape? Nope, no, not there. No. Uh, oh, wait, hold on. One, am I there? Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's really big. Oh, there we go. Okay, that's bigger than and I thought this. Those are the traps. That are jammed open. That are jammed open. So you can easily just sort of hop across the corner, but uh, that's a, a very deep pit. Okay. All right, sorry. I thought it was just one space. The red lines are deep pits? Yes. Inside okay. the, the red line is a deep pit. Apologize. You can't see. And this has writing over it again? Um, it, there's writing. There is writing on the coffin or on the thing. It looks remarkably similar to the other fountain. Sweet. Um, let there be fire. No, it does not say let there be fire. Go ahead and make a uh, perception check. Whoever's looking at it, if multiple people I'm are, they can all make my a hand check. over it. Are you looking at the? Uh, okay, you make it. You note the writing, uh, William. You don't see anything else. Kind of the ordinary. And this one says, "Let there be death." Um, Take, uh, <laughs> yes. Oh, hold on. Have He's any, have any more on. potion bottles? Ah, that's not what I wanted to do. No, don't do that. How do I select, delete, select Meepo? Move him up. Um, he wrinkles his nose at the outside of the room and seems reluctant to enter. What do you smell, Meepo? Stinks. Gross. Something lives here. Probably the rats. Something else. Something worse. Lives in this room? Close. I don't see it here, but it must be close. In 
transmission. Well, Meepo, I was uh, I was wondering if you had any more potion bottles. Uh, am I? Do you think you could bring maybe a handful? There seems to be a lot of these fountains. Um, okay, he'll run off and get one. While he's doing that, can I look in this pit and make sure there's whatever he's smelling is in this pit that none of us have looked in? Um, so you just want to see if there's anything in the pit? Yeah, I make I just want to make sure there's not something like living down in this pit that we just didn't. No, look rat bones, metal bits, filth, some rocks. Nothing's down there. All right, to have been quite embarrassed if it had jumped out and attacked us after like five minutes of sitting around in the room. <laughs> All right. Well, once me when Meepo's back, I'm gonna ask him if he can say "Let there be death" and Draconic. Um, all right. Meepo is somewhat reluctant, but he uh, at your cajoling, he utters the phrase. Um, immediately, a green foul mist spews from the mouth of the fountain, filling a cube. Uh, how do I do this? Where is it? Well, it's nice knowing you, Meepo. That area. Did Meepo oh. have to be so close? <laughs> yes. Well, um, <laughs> thanks, guys. Everybody in that area, please make a uh, constitution saving throw. Thanks, guys. <laughs> It seemed like a good idea at the time, I'm sure. <laughs> you all take four damage. Oh, only four? Cool. And are poisoned for ten minutes. Okay. Um. And there's nothing that I can scoop up into my... No, just a mist. Meepo mm -hmm. runs away, hacking and coughing. Does the mist dissipate? Uh, let's see. Yeah. After it does, I walk forward. You what? And I, after it does, I walk up to the fountain again, and uh -huh. I write down and I copy down the "Let There Be Death" uh, in Draconic, so that I can identify it later on. Okay. I'm gonna apologize to Meepo. Meepo oh, is. I assumed it was another, uh, another <laughs> potion, and I meant him no harm. Meepo, Meepo is weeping and retching, but he sort of nods and and, and doesn't seem upset at you. Just he just feels like shit. I'm gonna kind of scratch his scaly head. And... He might need some heals. I don't know how many hit points he has, but four seems like it might be a lot for him. He, he looks like he's about to expire. <laughs> um, and uh, for reference, a poison, uh, uh, if you're poisoned, you have disadvantage on like everything and you suck and you lose. Yeah. It's very um, bad. You don't want to be poisoned. Um. Meepo is going to ask uh, if you if he can take a, a rest and recover his strength. That's good. I need to be going. It's getting pretty late. Okay. Um, I will... Hold on, I can do this. Let me scale you out. Meepo is going to take you back to his room with the... with the fire pit is. Um, as um, we go, I want to write down the let there be fire as well. Okay. Now uh, come here. Get over here. Um, he, Meepo asks you to stay there for a moment and he disappears and gets uh, some um, uh, uh, some more bedrolls so that you can rest there. Um, oh, thanks. And he uh, goes off and curls up in his own and I wonder if we can get Meepo to join the party. There actually is a and d uh, adventure for, like, Meepo the Legendary or something like that. Oh my gosh, just reading about it. <laughs> he apparently was such a big hit with players. I love Meepo. He's great. Yeah. 
How could you not? Okay. Me, um. So. Long rest. Yeah. Um. And I think. I think you guys might level. I need to look into this for a moment. Um. Uh, it's level three. Oh, well, I guess we're not getting. Well, if we're getting more XP or anything. Yeah. Um. For the. Uh, for the rats, the trap, and the non-combat with the kobolds. Plus, it would just be, you're going to level soon, and it might be just much more convenient to do it now so that we can do the stats and stuff before the next session. So I think everybody, uh, you're going to get to level 2, so everybody can just set their experience to 300, and we will um, deal with that the next time. I'll do my long rest. Woo. Yeah, and everybody gets a long rest, so that means you're going to get all your health or your hit dice back. Right. All one of them. Spend a ration, and... Uh, uh, recharge your spell slots. Okay, so how do I use a hit dice? I click on it? Uh, you don't need to in a long rest, you just heal the full. Okay. That's how you use it, you just did it correctly, but you don't need to. Um, if you're asking how to use a hit die to level up, that's also how you do it, but if you roll really shitty, like that, you can also use the player's handbook um, base roll, which for a d10 is, I believe, six. Uh, 5 plus, or 6 plus constitution. Okay. Cool. Yep. Yeah. So, you can you can use the higher of those two values, because I want you to have the excitement of possibly rolling a 10, but I don't want you to have the, oh shit, I rolled a 2 and I got 4 hit points for leveling up as the party's tank balls. Yeah. Um, yeah, uh, Nick and I will go through and update everybody's character sheets to level 2. Um, if you have any choices that you need to make, like, you know, O's or paths or whatever, domains, um, let me know uh, in Discord, preferably, so that we can uh, have that as reference when we're updating those. And if you guys have any comments or questions about the campaign so far, please let me know. I have not DM'd in eight or nine years or something like that. So It was really fun. It was super cool. Um, I enjoyed it a lot. I liked the party. What's up with... I don't know how to say her name. Therese? Therese? She works nights. Yes. Gotcha. Sometimes. She frequently works. So sometimes she'll be with us, sometimes she won't. Yes, and she was invited with that understanding. Because honestly, oh, a four-man party is great. Um, and an occasional five is also fun. Uh, plus, she's a barbarian, so you'll have a big, huge, beefy meat target to, for everybody else to wail on. Sweet. She can rage and kill things. Yeah, Joe, that, this, this session was a lot of fun. Great. I hope we, uh, I hope you guys don't feel like I'm railroading you. I'm trying to let you guys make your own mistakes. Um, yeah. Seems good. It's very immersive. Good. Um, I the I didn't want to send a false message with that fire potion. You can just use it safely. I just thought that tasting a fiery potion out of nowhere should have consequences, which is why it hurt you. A little bit. Okay. Yeah, yeah like, oh, I'll just lick it. It'll be great. <laughs> lick, the, <laughs> lick the subway according, wall. According what could go DM's wrong? Guide, that's how you're supposed to identify potions. Oh, really? Yeah. I'm well, sorry, I, I didn't manage to get through the whole guide, but yeah, it's, it's, right. it's well, malfunctioning. It's, it's a thousand years old. Deal with it. How do alchemists not die? Like, on a weekly basis. It's like all those cop shows where they're like, hmm, this is definitely cocaine. <laughs> like, what about all the other times where they're like, hmm, this is definitely cyanide. <laughs> Fuck. Exactly. <laughs> you just... What's, well, what's the first time. thing they t teach you in a lab? Don't lick it. Don't <laughs> taste it. <laughs> yeah, there are plenty of really awful things. <laughs> um, yeah. So, okay, uh, that was good. Um... I'm looking forward to picking this up again. Let's see. It won't be... I think the next session will be on the 6th, if, assuming, Nick, that you're able to run yours on the 29th. Um, I am not going to be running my Thursday session next week. Because of okay. Do you want to do Good, the... I wouldn't be there. Yeah. Okay. Um, do you... Are we going to do yours on the 5th, then? Um, I don't know. Um... I guess it's up to you guys. I was thinking we would just keep on our two-week schedule for both of them and do yours on the sixth. But okay, so just just skip yours for one week. That's yeah. fine. So we'll meet again on the sixth. Then uh, same start time. Um, cool. And again, if anybody has any particular reason that you know a time that they need to to leave, just let me know in advance so I can sort of aim for a good stopping point around there. Um, 
And any uh, comments or feedback or questions or whatever, I'm happy to answer anytime. This this topic time is generally good for me, 11, 30, 12. Yeah. Uh, no, so. Okay, sounds good. We'll aim for about then then. Or about that time every time then. Mm. Alright guys, well thanks a lot. Uh, thanks for putting up with the <laughs> somewhat sluggish control of Roll20. I have not used it as a DM before and it's uh, it's kind of difficult, even though the book lays things out in a very clear way. Um, That's okay, it's a learning curve. Done, you guys have done pretty well so far. I did think that Nick was going to die that first <laughs> battle. I did have to make the rats skip a turn, because they easily could have killed you. Yeah. Um, I mean, and that would have been a bad way to start. Knocked me out. Well, not killed you, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, but it I was like, like oh, it's such a bad tone if in the very first encounter, the toughest member of the party is knocked unconscious by a rat. Yeah, that would be bad. <laughs> yeah. Well, thanks, Joe. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, thanks so much for your help, Nick. Uh, yeah, and fun. thanks, everybody, for helping set up your character sheets. Um, I will see you guys in two weeks. Yeah. Cool. Mm -hmm. see, see ya. Happy Easter. Oh. Yeah. Happy Easter, bro. Um, yep. Yeah. Next time, can we just try and seeing if the Roll20 video and voice chat is any good? I've used the voice chat. Okay. It's it, it works fine. Um, my, the reason I wanted to stick to Discord is because everybody's familiar with it. Okay. And um, that's fine. I know that like Ben likes to be on push to talk, and I'm not sure if push to talk works in Roll Twenty. Paul likes to be on push to talk. I hate push to talk. Oh, sorry. Paul likes to be on push to talk. I love push to talk. In any case, um, I just thought we'd switch stick with something that we all knew and were comfortable with, and it's easy to set up, and everybody has it. Okay, cool. Um, I'm getting better at recognizing voices. Um, you, there is a an overlay for Roll Twenty or for um, oh, that's what's it called true. I should get Discord. That Discord. Uh, if you're on one monitor, like a scrub. Uh, I normally have like a uh, player's handbook and stuff open on the second monitor, but I suppose I can like subdivide the window. So yeah, I, I do that talking. too. Um, Okay, uh, well, yeah, as I said, any questions, feel free to paste, post anything in uh, Discord. I'm checking that pretty regularly. Um, any feedback or anything that you'd like me to do more or less of, let me know. Uh, don't forget, uh, both Nicks, you have inspiration currently. Yeah. Um, you can use that at any time. Uh, and I'm going to try to hand that out pretty liberally, so don't be afraid to use it. Use it again. Like, uh, Rudy, if you'd already used it, you would have gotten it again for... Um, uh, I did use it. Destroying that. For the strength no, thing. You, no, you asked if you could, but you'd already, after you'd rolled, and you didn't need it. Okay, cool. But you would have mm -hmm. earned it again then, so that you would have earned it twice. So I, I, as I said, I want to try to give it out Stupid. pretty regularly for good role-playing, good acting, anything along those lines. So I encourage you to use it frequently. Who is it? Sounds good. You, you, you Andros, who is like, oh no, this would be a great thing. <laughs> it's because he wants money, and it would be really valuable. <laughs> so I, I had no clue how valuable it would be, what... What sort of value would it would it be? Like if you Let's try see. to sell it? Oh yeah, I don't know. <laughs> um sure I could finagle my way into some kind of deal. Right, but are we talking like five hundred gold or like five hundred thousand gold? <laughs> um probably a hundred to five hundred gold somewhere okay. in there. So a decent nice. chunk, but not like a house or not something. Not like you're set for yeah. life, okay. but I mean Maybe as much as twice what you're going to get for this entire campaign, okay. or sorry, this entire first quest. Yeah. In terms of like straight up gold reward, you'll get loot and stuff down here, which might be worth it, that much or more. Um, you guys haven't been searching for loot at all, by the way. I missed a fair amount. That's something to consider. Do you have um, to search for it? Like, spend I mean, time yeah. Or like, how? I wasn't if it's quite sure. Like lying on the ground in the middle. Well, just as an example of one thing, those rats' nests you passed had coins in them. Um, Not a ton. I was something. wondering. Nobody searched. I was thinking of burning yeah. them, actually. <laughs> Just because. I don't really want to go rooting through rat dung. <laughs> Fair enough. But if but you burn it, there are a number of a couple of things like that that you miss. Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, so I don't care that much about treasure. Other people maybe. Sure. Should that, and that's more. fine. I just wanted to again to let you guys know. No, I appreciate um, it. Because like, you, you missed one or two traps. But, everybody um, plays the game a little differently, it. so like I didn't yeah. know that we were missing the treasure. And knowing that, at least I can now choose whether. Or not. Exactly. I don't want to tell you guys always roll all the time forever, but just you know, th this is I'm using a pre-built adventure, and they have a lot of stuff in there right. for me to use. If they make this roll, then you find this and whatnot. 
Um, a, a few things you guys rolled for and just didn't roll high enough as well. Um, and that door you weren't supposed to be able to open, but I gave it to you, Nick, because that was good. You should have needed a turn on dead spell, but you just can't have turn on dead right. at this level. So <laughs> that was the best you could get. Yeah, that was also, a good call. Also, knock would have worked. I'm not sure why. Like you just knock on the door. Anything including magical locks. Oh, okay. oh, knock the thing. Um, well, it wasn't locked though. It was trapped. So, have you guys yeah. heard of the game? I think it's called The Council. No. Okay, so it's a game that just came out, and I'm I'm not. Um, let me see what I can find. About. I'm not super aware of what it is. It's like a narrative adventure game like the telltale games but mm -hmm. it's done really well and i think it incorporates something very interesting so they have an adventure where your choices and stuff really matter and they do that apparently fairly well but one thing that i think makes playing the game feel more interesting is that when there's a choice that you can't make like you don't have a high enough charisma or something they show it to you and tell you that you like you need 20 charisma or something like that and so doing stuff like that lets you see how broad the game is is kind of an interesting thing and gives so you a reason you, like, to replay what would have happened mm -hmm. all the details no like no no, no. Just they're like, just like there was a choice here that you couldn't do yeah it's like when you're making the choice you'll see like oh um you could try and translate this latin if you had latin skill but you didn't choose I latin see. skill I see. and so like uh, cool. the cardinal just talks to you in Latin and so your only option is to like admit that you don't know it or bullshit like oh maybe it means this but you don't have the option of like responding with a witty retort that shows you actually know what's going on but you see that option there you just can't make it that's cool I do like that kind of thing and apparently it's fairly short so you, you go back and replay it and you're like this time I want to know Latin or something like right, that right right <laughs> That's pretty cool. And I thought that was really interesting, because rather than hiding the option, which might make players feel like they have more control, by showing the option, you kind of show how deep your game is. Yeah, that is good, a good idea. Gives you an idea of what you're missing and an idea of you know, why you might want to come back and try again. Yeah. All right, guys, uh, I'm going to log off. Um, it was uh, definitely a lot of fun. Uh, looking forward to our next session. And uh, happy Easter to everybody. I will talk to you all later. Happy Easter. Right. See you. Thank you. Happy See Easter. You. Yes.